Oh, uh, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, I'd like to add an executive session to discuss correspondence from the attorney with the uh, relation uh, re reference to the stormwater drain. Okay. Um, so I think that's a new um, tenants the This year's this year's no yes. Okay, Aldridge, do we need to add it to the agenda or is it something we can take to update on after this? Like definitely. I think it's an issue enough for the board that we should be aware of this after the board doesn't want to. Yes. I would agree we should probably hear because that may be an ongoing issue or it has been an ongoing I think the other things that I was interested in we could probably make sure we're in under maybe Anyone else? Okay. Um, are there any issues or concerns that anyone would like to bring up? Well, the first thing I do want to say on this topic is that we are low transmission rate right now, so we are not required to wear masks. Anyone would like to not wear them? Um, there's some pricing happening. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And then um, the other thing that, uh, are there any other issues or concerns that anyone else would like to bring up? Okay, reviewing of invoices and orders. Um, do we have a palliative? Oh. Okay, allegiance props for maintenance, uh, vehicle maintenance, parts and repairs, steel filter, total of $1,827.76. Have any of our costs gone up since they, the acquisition, since they bought parts? Do we know? I'd have to compare it to previous years. It was not. I, if, it, if it went up, it was not a remarkable amount. It was not immediately noticeable without actually comparing year over year. Okay, this is really the first time they've used in the law. We have to get the tracks on the Yeah, pretty much everything else has been warranty work or just carryover from when it was Clark's. Okay. Okay. Um, for us, our fuels. Um, for the mill house, six hundred thirteen dollars and eleven cents, half of which came from the um, village. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, wait. There's a couple of different ones here. The mill house, town storage, the garage. The mill house is six hundred thirteen dollars split in half. The town storage building nine hundred fifty one dollars, half due from the village. Town garage, $912.95. Town diesel, diesel tank, $4,622, um, half of which is due from the, no, not half, $1,267.28 in the village. 
So the historical society heat propane six hundred and forty four dollars and thirty two cents. Town garage heat one hundred and ninety eight dollars and thirty eight cents. Town storage building four hundred and thirty two dollars seventy nine cents. With a total paid to Brussels fields of nine thousand five hundred and fifty two dollars and eighty one cents. Pond welding and supply cylinder lease parts and supplies forty five fifty. Hillside trash for a dumpster for events and programs of $65. American Legion Memorial Day projects, $200. Johnson Solar uh, electricity, electricity and full compass electricity, total of $339.98. Johnson Hardware and Rental for a padlock, a blade, and a first aid kit, a total of $69.73. Economic development, Memorial Economic Development, annual dues, $3,000. Nichols and Associates, um, reporting overpayment for clerk office fees, $15. Kyle News Beautification Committee, beautification, $758.25. Uh, Staples Business Credit for paper, um, 4920, half of which is from the village. Schnitzel, Page, and Fletcher, legal services, $191.13. Uh, Union Bank loan with Camden truck interest, salt truck, uh, the 2021 truck payment um, for a total of $55,577.70. Sorry. That was for one payment. A total of $57,383.74. Can you go back to the beautification committee? Um, and it looks like we paid out to Kyle personally. Okay, is is that, uh, I mean, that's a lot of money, over $700. Mm -hmm. That's not typical that that kind of money is spent by an individual. Well, they've done a lot of beautification. They've had a whole day where they uh, top sold and doing the power. They couldn't have run it through you first? And well, they went to the big lots. Okay, a lot of in incidental. Okay. Thank you. Will you follow up? Uh, Rosier, will you follow up Kyle and just ask if wherever that's possible that she can put it on our account for both for you for purchasing? That would be ideal. Um, just to let her know that. And if we, if we did go through like Johnson Farming Garden, we'd have to have a purchase agent that's in our policy. Yeah. Not yeah. Not Okay. 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 Uh, League of Cities and Towns, the professional training for $120. Uh, Beamers, retirement, total of $4,639.46. Work safe. Speed limit signs a total of $1,367.70. Questions for Rosemary or anyone else? Are we going to continue to do this for years and years and years? You can just shake your head, yes. You can just show up at 7 o'clock, too. Yeah. But. I love you. I love your report. It's 10 minutes. So if you'd like to speak at seven, you'll have some minutes. That is 50, 50 minutes of people time. Not call. 
Okay. Um, if the board would like to discontinue, we should talk about it. But would okay. you like to discontinue? Okay. I would like to look at how we look at all of our purchases and that might, I mean, that's a future discussion that we I think have on our uh, to-do list. But if looking at everything, we could do away with that, I would be in support of it. Okay. Um, we had that as one of the projects listed out, but we did not prioritize it. Just Thoughts from my review? Would you like to continue doing this? I would. Okay. That's it. I'm going to select for this task level, making sure. I'd be a lot more inclined to not be doing it. For such as purchasing the policy. Yeah. So, Mark, bring it up again, please. Or we'll get our purchase order of higher priority list. Okay, review and approve minutes from May 16th. So moved. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get the motion on the floor. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion second. Discussion? Uh, Casey Romero wrote in with some changes that she would like to see. Uh, she copied Donna on these. No, she didn't copy Donna. She copied Lisa. All right, so I can read these out on uh, item 14, and Casey is available by Zoom if we have questions for her. Can we just know for the passes? Say again? What, are, what is she asking? What, what are the updates? Clarifying a few things during the skate park, skate park discussion. Um, so this is under item number 14. Uh, correcting one sentence that starts, Brian said our policy at the skate park does, and then adding the word not, so it does not prevent use of alcohol. Uh, that's a significant one because it changes the meaning oh, of the sentence. Yeah. Donna, do you want me to send you the text? Sure, that would be helpful. I mean, we have a motion to approve right now, so we can't just change the text. What are the other changes suggested? A uh, couple sentences down says we can address behavior issues. Rephrasing that one to say uh, in other ways, rather than focusing the discussion on alcohol. Um, next sentence, scratching, not follow the rules, replacing it with breaking the law. Then at the end of that paragraph, striking if they are not following our rules from the last sentence of that paragraph. Is is what she suggesting what she had wished had been said, or do the meaning minutes reflect exactly what was said? Most of these are um, here she comes. No, uh, most of these are clarifications. The Addition of the word not to that first sentence that I brought up is a significant change and is better reflective of what was actually happening. Okay. Some of the other ones where we talk about, um, you know, where we talk about alcohol, I don't remember if alcohol really was the focus of our discussion or whether it's a broader issue. Uh, I know it is a broader issue, but I don't remember if our discussion was about so focused on alcohol as it reads when it's reflected in the minutes. So, Eric, you have the motion, and Mark, you have a second. Do you want to make an amendment? I would consider it a friendly amendment to add the word not 
because that's a significant change. But the rest of it, if it's just clarification. Um, yeah, I don't believe that any of these others truly change the meaning of what's written. It just to add a little bit of clarity and context. Do you accept that? Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion with a modification to the notes. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Have it. Okay, Rosemary, you're up. Yeah. Yeah. And we are the office is going to be closed Thursday afternoon. Thanks for this all new production time for you. Brandy and Jake starting in. That's fine. Are you are you saying the whole state's going to well, migrate? Everybody that has a tabulator is getting a new tabulator, and it's going to J Peak. J Peak's a long way from like. They've had different. Oh, okay. Around the state. Good. They chose J Peak. <laughs> <laughs> no. All the schedules. Look at the overall and our monthly year. Okay. So we we talked about it for audit purposes. I might be able to help with that if I can interject. Um, we originally, I mean, we approached this person at BLCT, uh, Sarah and Macy. Um, we approached them about financial controls originally. And one of the things that we were working on was going to be the starting our, our regular office. Uh, with the outside source. So we have we have been working with her and having some discussions around financial controls and they would be interested in kind of serving us to the extent that we ask them to, but kind of our priorities, I guess it was mostly set by the prior board. The priority was set on, let's get through the audit first and then you know try and work in more uh, more financial policies uh, in the future. So we have not had extensive discussions, but she is more than happy to help us with any additional financial controls we wanted to implement. The auditor is also happy to Certainly, I'm a fan. Yeah, 
All right. We have two items coming up on the plan for just um, First, I'm going to go with, the, with these just kind of in reverse order. The first one I want to bring up is uh, the renting the boom mower for roadside mowing. Uh, we've consulted with a couple of different rental agencies locally. It is $3,000 per week. Uh, for $6,000, we can cover uh, a significant number of the roads. Jason's spoken to the tree board and uh, has worked with Noah about identifying. No. No, thank you. Uh, worked on identifying some of the kind of more vulnerable areas, uh, more critical areas that they don't want to use the boom mower on. Uh, but this would be, we can cover a lot of ground with the boom mower. So in places where it's not going to damage a, you know, a, a sensitive habitat, it is a good use of our resources to get a lot of brush cutting done in a timely manner. Uh, so six thousand dollars is for two weeks uh, that they'd like to bring in for the last two weeks of June. Does that include the, the vehicle that runs the boom mower, or just the mower attached to our tractor? Our tractor is not a horsepower. I believe that's the case. Uh, that it it includes the vehicle. Okay. You know, our tractor's more powerful and could run some boom mowers, but I believe that the one that we get is kind of a heavier duty than what our tractor would support. Who is the, who's the rental company? It is, and this would be where it, it would be helpful to have Jason, uh, the one in Morrisville. Beats. 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 Thank you. So last year, it ended up being $3. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. That is the full budget amount for the two weeks as well. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the plan. It is uh, Jason scheduling vacation and leave time around, planning on having a this piece of equipment here and dedicated use the entire time it's rented. Do they also use this on the rail trail, or do we use our own? We use our own on the rail trail. Uh, the boom mower is it's a mower deck on an articulated arm. Um, it is most useful for getting around obstacles. So we might use it in a couple spots where we want to mow on the other side of a guardrail. Um, we also use it quite a bit where we turn it up so that we can cut brush back um, for visibility, especially around corners and things. That's what I was thinking about on the rail trail. If there was any of that kind of brush cutting, we haven't in the past, okay. and I we have no current plans to do so. Okay. I'm assuming. I'm oh, sorry. We rent it by the hour. Week. So we could run it 24 hours a day. I'd have to check no. if there is. We, a... we must haven't we rent it by the hour. <laughs> Come on, you have that committed to memory. Scott. Sooner by the hours, we rent for 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that we rent it by the hour, 40 hours. We're, I don't believe that we're return, driving it back and forth to them at the end of every day. No, we, we keep it here. But yeah, I imagine there's also a... Here, we, we use it 10 hours. Yeah. It depends on the company. It, right. Jason, some yeah, and the equipment like this is most likely going to be kitted out with a usage tracker of some sort. Yeah, an hour meter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, I don't know if we're limited by the number of hours or not, but um, we are. Yeah, I would be shocked if we weren't too. The other thing is, <laughs> how much does it cost to hire somebody to do this per hour? You know, is it $120 an hour and we could just pay somebody else to do it for the same price? We used to hire somebody. We, I don't know. But we didn't do, we, a year back then we did mostly, we were trying to cover, as Brian said, behind the guardrails. 
So we we weren't we weren't really using that now a lot on the main roads. I still think it's something to. I mean, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't do this, but I feel like we should know how much it would cost to hire somebody. It's not affecting our budget because as a select board member once told me, you've got to be there anyway. That is true, and we're maybe spending money elsewhere, but the, but that's beside the point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We switched two or three years ago to uh, renting the equipment and having one car guys. Perform the service. You. That's not really a question. No, it wasn't. I, I was uh, at that time. The priority was to get more done with within the same budget. Um, we can maybe it's still the case. We get we if we want to talk about changing priorities or changing the amount. That's all on the table. I just want to know what the difference is. That's all. Yeah. Homework assignment for Jason. I think it is a homework assignment for Jason. I think we should know that. Okay. HP Fairfield used to run tractor and hour. So I don't know if they still do or not. I'm not going to check it down. You're not in Marshall right now? No, I think they just dropped up from Massachusetts. Is that what they talked about? Okay, um, so, so, yep. I'm sorry. I was going to suggest that the board could conceptually approve the rental as long as Jason checks in and makes sure that it's still more cost effective than contracted services. Because they do need to schedule the stuff out. We just get this out in like two weeks and so approve it. I guess my thought was more of the next year, not <laughs> just this year, go ahead and move. Renting the equipment, but next year having that comparison for us. But that was my thought, but I'm not sure. Uh, what's the I word. asked because I was thinking about our labor and I've heard of some things about our labor in that we don't have the fifth employee and we've had some folks out every now and then. Um, and if our crew is feeling that, this might be a good release. And if it's the same cost, why wouldn't we do it by hiring somebody? I would be impressed if it was the same cost. But well, I'm not know. saying it is or it isn't. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we can get six thousand dollars worth of kind of work. Question would be to get this thing from the front front yeah, and, and that's the only work you have of the day. No, we, you know, not to speak for Jason too much, but I, I think that he would carry out whatever we ordered, whether it was, yeah, we could get 6,000. It will be less feet of mowing. Um, we could still get our guardrails and probably trim at least some of our most problematic corners. Um, I know they were really, we're getting close to having a full pass on the whole town in terms of trimming back on all, all of our corners and a significant number of our roads. So they'd like to, and they plan for it. So they'd like to do it rental uh, this year. Okay, what's the board's pleasure on the rental bunker? I'm with it, I'm with it. Let's okay. just rent, rent it. Is that a motion? Uh, I, I didn't make a motion, no. Over a thousand. I think we need to. I think, yeah, traditionally we have uh, made a motion for it, uh, but we can make a motion. We usually move it as a slate of, of all the plant purchases. Good. What's the next one? So the next one is sand. So this would be winter sand. Uh, that would be convenient to stock up around now over the next month, uh, month and a half, using next year's winter sand budget uh, to fill up before the 
the rust starts on trying to move sand. Uh, it's convenient timing for scheduling. Uh, it won't be billed till after July 1st. So the intention is to go and buy uh, $40,000 worth of sand. Beginning it from Menash, um, we contacted uh, Percy's, formerly, uh, formerly NATO's, and they were not set up yet for us to haul sand out. So Menash is about $8 cheaper. Given travel times and everything else, it works out to be about the same. It can take 40 minutes to get here from here to Morris. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just like right, right now, it's going to take a while. Right now. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. How much of the issue is, is that, Brian, given, given the construction that's going on right now? Does it make sense to? It works out well with our scheduling right now. It is not, yeah, an ideal world. It wouldn't be kind of what we have our, we, we don't want to spend, ideally we wouldn't want to spend a lot of time with our guys stuck in traffic. Um, but for other scheduling things, other scheduling purposes, Hauling sand is a convenient way. It doesn't take a lot of people to do it. It doesn't take a lot of coordination. It's a pretty good activity for times when we've got people uh, out for vacations and, and other purposes. No, upper French Hill, like there's other ways that are, I, I imagine our guys are probably taking Upper French Hill to go to Menashe's, but. Where is Menashe's gravel pit? Isn't that up in Wilcott? Yeah, it's on 15. Yeah. I, that, that's where I think it is. I've never actually been to Menashe's gravel pit, but Menashe has property that looks like a gravel pit from the road up there. Have we ever looked into Greg Tejo's even sand and gravel? Is that Sand that's built in quality. It's a solar farm now. It is? Yeah. That's not a ground. <laughs> <laughs> you drive. I gotta get around more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. How do, want, how do we want to proceed? I think that we're talking a lot of, about a lot of things that aren't going to impact our decision on how we proceed. Is there any more pages? No, these are, well, we've got one that we're going to cover in our regular part of our agenda on uh, fencing for the cemetery. Okay. So you've got, you're, you're moving the full slate, Evan? Yeah, we need the material. Uh, no, but I'm, I just wanted I to second. know. Second. All, all three of them, good. <laughs> Excellent. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Me. All those opposed? Mr. Eisenhower. And then I'm, I'm going to remain for budget discussion here. This is money on the cost of funding. For budget time, how much it would cost to actually purchase? If we're spending six thousand bucks a year on these things on a quarterly basis, does it make sense for us to hold these at some kind of time? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? So you did check it out. Yes. It's about machinery or roads and I'm just looking into it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We we've looked into it before and unless we started mowing significantly more. It, it doesn't really make financial sense for us. Um, so the amount of use it wouldn't necessarily have to buy No. Uh, okay. Uh, just pause for one second. For those who join late, we are at a low transmission rate in the Wild County. You do not have to wear your mask if you choose not to. Okay. You may or you may not. Uh, NEMS 
Scott is here with the annual contract for NAPS. The coverage is the same as the last 14 or 15 years. <laughs> the thing that has changed is some, which, from what I understand, you'll approve the 10 years, which will authorize you, should authorize you to contract by two. This is for your. Chair. I mean, that would be something, um, would be a discussion between the five towns if you wanted to change that. But your grand list is probably one of the five as well. No, we might be higher than Waterville. My only question is how. All the people need to We're going through that in Newport right now with the state police and we're going to be dispatching. So, Sheriff's Department up there said we want the dispatch thing and they're looking at past year's call volume, um, which helps us immensely. I think they're making a pretty mistake by doing it, but it really hurts certain towns up there. Some towns are paying way less than they should on the rural towns, whereas the city of New York and Derby are going to be hammered because that Newport, especially because they have elderly homes, and so Colorado and there are higher, so it really hurts those larger communities. Any other questions? No? Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seven. Thank you for doing the COVID stuff. Yeah, our contract is right. Yeah, I heard. I think right now what they're looking at is if we need more, just a few. Yeah. It still seems to be a fair amount out there. Well, it was nice. I was really handy to have you right in town. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it's very good for our budget. We are actually able to pay off the three years early, and we're putting a new roof on it this year as well. Cool. So we'll get a reduction next year. Cool. It's always something at the price of diesel, which is terrible. That is not fun at all. How's uh? Staffing, are you able to maintain staff? We're short two right now here at Johnson and three on the floor. That was as a little bit weeks ago when my jobs were at another recently. Um, but now it's a problem trying to work with local high schools and stuff because it's it's a good job for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you work two 24 hour days a week. Um, have you been there for a while? Little overtime, right? Sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year. Stay low. Mm -hmm. So people want to get into it. We certainly will help them do that. Mm. Great. So, what's the training cost? Well, um, start out the M two, the M three R, or advanced, whatever they call it today. 
it's not a lot, probably four or five hundred dollars. You know, okay. that effort, it'd be expensive, but we have availability of programs that will help people um, go through that program. And the training is extensive, it would take a couple of years to become a paramedic, <laughs> and more so to become a um, certified author. But we've got some great people, we're very, very fortunate. You do, but we can all choose more. Because much of an issue is there right now is, uh, providing backup for other people, providing when, when they don't have somebody available. Or, it hasn't been a problem with a great relationship with no stuff right now. And it's been actually helping us more to get all things done. I don't know if they have to deal with things or not. Um, we're in district four, and everybody seems happy with what's happening right now. We will get, um, especially at night, if um, we end up in the training schools, um, to grab a little bit of to love that. Thank you. Believe me, there's been a lot of changes here in the last <laughs> year or two. There, there was hardly any for the first of me to see. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, see you later. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, so we have the two contracts from the Sheriff's Department for uh, patrol and communications. These are for our budgeted amounts. Meaning, are we actually going to share the contract? Yeah, I think it affects the contract because at our last um, and the comment was that the sheriff is concerned about issuing tickets on our ordinance if we didn't have the proper signage. And I sent Brian Lunell back on May 18th. And Brian had researched it and sent out an email saying, if I understood it correctly, that the guidance is clearly in favor of the speed limit signs at those intervals. But it's not specifically stated in the law that way. So my question to Brian was, if Roger and the Sheriff's Department is saying they can't or won't enforce our duly adopted speed ordinance. A, why? Mm -hmm. And B, has any court of competent jurisdiction you know, overturned the ticket because we didn't have the speed on the side of So, in that context, if the contract says he's going to enforce ordinances, to me, that means to enforce the ordinance. Did you did you were you able to do any research on that Ryan? No, I haven't. I, I don't have any definitive answer for you on exactly what you said, the, the, a court of confidence uh, making a determination. I know that I, I know what the recommendations are, but I can't I, I have not found uh, anything definitive to say why this is the recommendation and what is, you know, what is the gap and how many or what cases have been overturned because it didn't follow the recommendation. I think that in this case, um, 
unless, in this case, the contract states that they'll enforce our ordinances, and that's what we need our, the contract to say. Now, if that doesn't happen, I agree with you. Like, we should be questioning why it's not happening. Um, but I think from our point of view, because the contract specifies um, enforcing ordinances, that serves the town well. Unless we want to find out somebody else, but we don't really have a whole lot of options. So we do have some time because well, we have one more meeting before July 1st when our current contract's up. So if, I'm wondering if Brian could get that information from Roger on has any of our ordinances been court tested in, with a speed limit? Uh, yeah, I, I can move that to a higher priority and I can have yeah. and then some kind of answer for you. before. Like you should meeting. be able to provide me an answer before we meet again in two weeks and we could then approve his contract. Is that going to change the contract? Is there a date? No, no, no. I don't mean date. I mean, if Roger comes back and says that our or that anything any that was issued was overturned because our ordinance wasn't in order, would that change this contract? I think it might change our ordinance, but I don't see that it would change this contract. I well, think I think the, 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 the other question is more important in my mind. If he is saying he won't enforce the ordinance, because in his opinion, we don't have the records of signers, that to me is different than a court overturning the ticket. If, if the court overturns the ticket, then it would be it's our ordinance. We could appeal the court's decision to overturn the ordinance. I understand your point, but it, I still don't think it changes this contract because this contract isn't specified, and frankly, it's not in our favor. And this contract doesn't specify that they want speed limit signs every time. Our this no, no, contract no. specifies that they enforce our ordinances, and if for whatever reason they can't enforce the ordinance, that's about us looking at our ordinance. It's not about the way we work this contract. Or it's fresh Exactly. Yep. But I don't I don't feel like whatever Brian finds is gonna change the wording of this work of this contract. It, it won't. But we have a little bit of clout right now because Roger would be as inclined and interested in having this sign as we are, and we do have a little bit of time. Now would be the time to, I think, pose that question to Roger. To, it sort of puts him on notice that we have an expectation that our speed ordinance, speed limit ordinance is going to be enforced. You know, come back and tell us if it's not enforceable. In your major concern in speed limit ordinance, there's a gazillion other ordinances in this town. Right. But it's speed that you're worried about because that's what where they make money or where they well it's because of the difference in what the statute lays out for requirements versus the guidelines versus what and we I'm not sure what Roger is looking at. Or has any any of it ever been court tested? I suspect that if you polled most Johnson residents, the vast majority of them would say the most important thing that they'd like to see out of a sheriff's contract is slow down the traffic, issue some tickets, speed limits. That, that used to be the best of the points that we have. So I think, it, I think it's pertinent. I, I agree with you that technically, I don't think it makes a difference with the content. I also agree with Eric that if what Brian said earlier is Roger is telling us we don't have enough signs, and he can't enforce the speed limit. I think that's an issue we need to deal with. Yeah. If it if it means we got to put up more signs, then that's the answer that we need. If it means, I hear you. No, no, no. I hear you. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Just so we can push this off. Totally fine. I just want to. I'm grinning a little bit because I just spent the week in South Carolina and. 
I literally was looking for stupid signs and could not find them. <laughs> and my brother was talking about how his wife gets tickets. <laughs> so <laughs> they are they literally working behind trees and other things to make it pretty, right? It's all about it making, making it look nice. So I just find it ironic. So I would move that we uh uh, uh, sign the uh, contract for the communication, though. We'll at least get that one out of the way. The whole board has to sign Any discussion on the uh, dispatch? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Have it. Do we have a clean copy to sign? We can sign this one, we'll send it out. So I have this window of opportunity to adjust his contract. Yeah. I have this window of opportunity to adjust his contract. Yeah, window of opportunity the last meeting. Yep. Great. Still do. Good. I want enforcement of our ATV ordinances. <laughs> it's an ordinance. It should. Be. And and he says no. I'm not going to do it. So. All right. I'm going to move on to the next one while the, that's going down the line for signatures. So next up is a tax penalty abatement request. Uh, Tim Hayes has written in uh, with the request that, um, let's see, he paid his taxes in May uh, a little bit later than May 10th. Uh, it looks like it was a little bit less than a week later than May 10th. Um, they have regularly paid taxes, uh, but this year uh, they were sick with COVID and were, were sick during the period that taxes were due. So their tax, getting in to pay their taxes was delayed a little bit. Uh, and it is asking the town to abate the penalty. Uh, Tim is at a prior commitment out of town, so he was not able to attend in person tonight. Okay, and there is, there was some, we're not in emergency order anymore. That's the first thing to say. To say. What was the thing that the board had put in place previously when we were in emergency order? The, when people, well, when the office wasn't open for the public, we, we did authorize some, waive some late, late fees for some amount of time yeah 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 it was just that first year but we waived uh, every penalty that was related to covid during that first year but historically we had not granted or approved any of these that were late for some i mean over the years we've heard just about everything and it's some of why they were late paying their taxes but in reality, they, they get that tax bill in August. They know for nine months that that bill is going to be due. There's plenty of opportunity to come to this office and pay in person or put a stamp on an envelope and mail a check in. So, I mean, I'm sorry that it was late. I'm sorry he had COVID, but I don't think it's a uh, legitimate excuse for being late. Right. What was the date we actually got paid? What date did, did we get paid? Crack open. Oh, mm -hmm. No, you, you, you can't crack open. The store because then it's then everybody else yeah. can't do mm -hmm. the other thing. I'm a baby. So if he puts it off to us, we're going to get more of this stuff. And the, the penalties and interest. Are something that were set by the voters. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to get some context of time. So now in June. Okay. Mm -hmm. What the board? What would the board like to do or not? Anything? I second it. 
Second what? The motion you're about to make. No. I would say you take no action. Take no action. Which okay. is a denial. Okay. So the select board, I mean, the select board doesn't actually have the Board of abatement. The tax bill is pretty clear. Some good news call has you know some of the tax Okay, so Brian will respond. Yep. And I think that in that response we should say what the formal appeal for process is to probably okay. 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 Really odd. We should really get that from another. Mm -hmm. One's more dollars. Okay. Okay. Next. Next up is uh, our grants and aid letter of intent. So, grants and aid is one of the state programs that was implemented along with uh, the municipal road general permit, which is the permit that regulates stormwater on all public roads. Um, they're charging us for the privilege. Uh, and one of the ways that they try and make it up to us is they gave a little bit more money uh, to stormwater related grant programs and created new ones like this. We've done pretty well in this program. Not every municipality participates and they have a lump sum of money that they divide up between all the participants. We participated every year. We've done pretty well with it. Um, so we intend to participate again. Our plan on this year, uh, last year we did Fox, part of Fox Lot Road from the top down to about halfway. Uh, our plan is to do the rest of the way down to uh, Over Hill. We've done you know, the preliminary design work uh, with Rob at uh, LCPC, and we're in good shape for it. We've got plans, you know, to rent the excavator, do this project and a couple other ditching projects around town at the same time. So another piece of rental equipment that we'll make heavy use of during the rental period. And we'll get part of that rental period paid off by grants. So you're looking for approval and an authorization to sign? Yep. I would so move. Uh, it's signed by a duly authorized representative, which can be different than the primary point of contact. I'm happy to okay. sign it if you uh, Motion to approve the request and authorize the chair to sign. Second. Uh, any discussion? Favor. Aye. 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 Good to get your signature out there. Uh, that's good. That's good. Oh, no, you didn't hear? This is a 20 year commitment. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah, you said a high honor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have a uh, response for, from our mowing RFP. Uh, we got a response from Robert and Sons Lawn Care. Um, they are willing to continue their, they gave us this proposal that met our RFP conditions, uh, but they are also willing to continue their current arrangement with us. Uh, Did they, have they stopped in the last week or so? They have not stopped, but they have, they, they're having some staffing issues, so they're not getting as much done as. Because the Arboretum looks like a hayfield. Yeah. I mean, it is. The Village Green is 
in, in the region, region field and getting close. <laughs> so, that's just the other. That's the a couple additional sites of ours, and there's a number of sites that they do with the village. Uh, so see, for this amount, they only know. So no, it would be under their, their <laughs> current work. Which is, is Rosemary, do you recall how much we pay? Maybe even less, Eric, because it, it, the start date is 516 and the end date is 516, so it's just that. They use one. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing they're holding this uh, uh, as estimate beyond 516.22. Yes. And um, quantity of one is one year. Once a week. Six months. Six months. One month. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, this, the, we were having that discussion down here about one month. Yeah. And it's on May 16th. <laughs> we missed it. <laughs> okay, so with so it sounds like there's some friendly amendments here to update the confirm as group. Is there a second? Our second. Okay. Yeah, that's second. We want some friendly amendments for our credit. Yeah. <laughs> then the way. Well, I assume it is typical of last year's contract. It's a once a week or once every I have no idea. It, it's once a week. Um, the part of the problem that we ran into is that we don't have a written contract with them. And without some coordination with the village, we can't, I can't accurately represent every place that they mow mm -hmm. in the town and village. But this is our share of 6,700, or is the village? It's going to be more under yeah. the because they're going to mold more parsing. This was the, the the idea we came up with when we realized when we wanted to put the RFP out that we we could not represent the village in our design. So we came up with a list of. Wait, hold on. We need to have one discussion at a time. So. Th this list of sites, we could not come up with a comprehensive list of sites that included all of the town and the village locations. So we came up with a set of sites that we were going to ask everybody to submit a proposal for how much would it cost to mow this so that we could compare apples to apples to compare the different contracts we received. But the winning contract would have to mow all of the sites. Great. We don't have. Uh, <laughs> for example, that the right there. It's all small. the spaces in between the sidewalk and the main road. The village is paying for that. Our benefit in this case of that we only receive Robert and Sons, uh, they know everything that they mow for the village and what they build the village for. So we don't actually have to teach them what to do for the village, which is good because we, or I can't teach them what to do for the village, but they already know. So the only so, additional item this, this year is your park. Yes, I believe that's the case. Well, we've got a lot of public participation. Yeah. The hands are raised. Yeah, I, I believe that's the case. Is that Beard is the only addition, and for Beard, it's not. Uh, Hold on one second. Wait, wait, wait. Beard is not what? We're not mowing all of Beard. We're mowing a path in Beard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your question is: the gross cemetery is included? I just wanted to clarify. Yes, it will. Be. 
Okay. Any other questions from the board? I didn't know the answer. Is it going to be It is. Okay. Lois. Um, home loans for library. That's a migration. Okay. And um, Robinson's also does library. What do you know? It should be. It, it, it is under the current contract. Okay. Uh, technically, beer doesn't need to be on the list because the conservation commission has taken on the task of replanting the gap cap. So the, the molars don't have to go on in that bank. That's the problem of the last year. Okay. I, okay. That was your comment, Kim, or did you have a comment? I just was going to ask if there is an order, and if there isn't a, a priority to be for the arboretum just to keep the not weed seals, if it isn't mowed, it's a not weed for factor again. And there's been a lot of work put into tilling and getting that rich, like smelled out. So I don't know if there's an order to his mowing, but if that was a possibility to hit. As I understand it, and I'll, I'll talk to Robert and Sons again. As I understand it, if they're missing sites right now, the next time they come through, those are the first, the next time they come through. I like this contract less and less. So if we're not getting involved once a week, so. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. I would just recommend that we a friendly amendment to the motion is that we add language to this agreement that says mowing once per week and then specify our unit of measure. So a quantity of one is not one mow. Brian, did the RFP specify mowing once a week? Yes. So to your point, Beth, we could say approve the contract in accordance with the stipulations that we have to be. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yep. Um, except that the RFP doesn't have all these locations listed, so I would be careful of well, not exactly the work. The RFP does have these locations listed. It does not have all of our locations Correct. listed. So I think we should be careful of that. So this is his bid. Yes. Do we see a contract? We have never had a contract with them in the past. Okay. They, it's just a handshake. These are the areas we want mowed, and these always done that. Yes. We can ask for a contract. It would be, in a lot of ways, helpful, especially if we could get the village to participate and get all of the locations that are mowed by them cataloged. Uh, I used to have a spreadsheet. So they were broken down, and, and then the village trustees approve the contract. Village signs is the village, are the village trustees going to lay in? I don't believe that the village the village trustees have taken this up at all. We should be signing the contract. That's We have a motion, we have a second. Um, I was suggesting that we say we add them away once per week. So friendly amendment back. Oh yeah. I'm ready. It's friendly from this side too. Time to put this baby to bed. Do they want small bills? I think we're the big girls today. That the trustees will be responsible for. Uh, 
You've got to have somebody. Sure. No. Okay. Yep. Yep. I saw her. I was waiting for you to finish. Are you done? <laughs> Sometimes I like to hear myself talk. Thanks. <laughs> um, just as someone who works closely with Roberts and Sons, they are very, very nice and they are very, very well intentioned and they are doing a terrible job this year. And I think we, there should be somewhere we say, we're not paying you if you don't come. They have yeah. been skipping. Weeks at a time. I've called three, four times and said, like, I have games in this field. It cannot be me. And then, oh, we're trying. It's raining. We're short staff. But from a business point of view, you just don't pick on work you can't do. Right? So that you should not be paying them if they're not coming to your town. That's why the once a week. That's why the once a week. Is there. Yes. I think but, that every property has to be listed. And somebody has to go around and see that all the properties were done. Pretty huge. I'm sorry to put that on you guys, but they're doing a really bad job. They're really nice, but they're doing a terrible job. Let's put that in a police ordinance. <laughs> 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 well, if we're still discussing it, you don't have to accept this bit. We can go back. We can go back out. They're the only one we got, though. In the middle of well, how, how extensively was it advertised, um, posted? Um, it, it could be advertised better. I 100% agree with that. I think that we should not go out to bid again until we get cooperation from the village, because it's until we have the village's cooperation on their sites, it's going to be a mess uh, when we try and write another RFP. Okay. I'm supporting I, this motion still. You're still supporting it? Okay, good. Okay, uh, let's change the vote. All those in favor of the correct motion? Uh, Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Okay, I have it. Thank you. I mean, they're the only bidder. It isn't like the camera. Yeah. And when are you going to get help from the group? Yeah. <laughs> I nominate okay, morning for discussion about roads allowed and not allowed by HGU. So, uh, in addition to or replacing what's in the packet, uh, you've got a sheet on uh, eight and a half by 14 paper. Does that mean more roads or just? Uh, it is. Print? It is larger print mostly, but um, I also added Plot Road uh, to this because I, it was originally listed as Clay Hill and Plot Road and only referenced Clay Hill. So it didn't cover Plot Road properly. Now, this will get into word, but I don't know. Technically, you know, the listing certainly on on a portion of the current ordinance that sits does not say ATVs are not allowed on paved portions of class three roads. It says they're not allowed on paved class three roads. Yes. There's not very many class three roads that are entirely paved. They have road segments. The road segments are not spelled out in the current ordinance. I guess that'll be left up to interpretation. Um, but there's a lot listed here just on the portion, which has been discussed a lot in the past, but that's not how our current ordinance is written. For big segments, it's written for page three class roads, ATVs are not allowed. That's very clear. Like Mile Road has a small way print. It's definitely not a big class three road. Thoughts on that. The, the current ordinance says ATVs are not allowed on class two and eight persons for class year. The current ordinance was what they are technically allowed on. It says they're allowed on all class four rolls. And on, on page class three rolls. It doesn't say. Unpaid segments of class three roads. So, like River Road West, technically, is a class three road, right? Uh, but 
upper shell and their goal is to build a long, elitist baby. So the first goal is not me. But the current order is not set up the role in seconds. It doesn't. I, I would argue that the intent of the ordinance is not that awesome. We could uh, pay attention. Um, I mean, when the ordinance is put in place, the papers are grown as well. That's the intent. Right? I don't know that too many acres have grown since the ordinance was put in. In 2006, every time an acre was cut. So it says all train vehicles may be operated only on the following highways. <clears throat> One, any unpaved class three town highway, and two, class four town highways as identified on the official town highway map. The select board may list specific unpaved class three and class four roads where ATVs may be operated or not operated by an annual posting and public notice of roads when the ATV use. Uh, by an annual posting and public notice of roads open to ATV use as per this ordinance. So we could use this as our annual posting. Yeah. Um, just well, that's a little point if we're going to do that, we should probably say on a second. And I, I totally get what you're saying. I think you did. So, right. Yeah. So, really argue that they want to Um. So, would we like to? Would the board be interested in using this as a posting of what the roads? Yeah. Um. Define the roads are. Mark, give me a thumbs up. If it is, it absolutely all the towns. Yeah, I, I think that there's a. I know that there are class four roads that aren't done here. This one specifically, no. Would you like to use the foundation in our? Can we do something that actually has the intent of this? Of basically saying the unpaved portions or the paved portion, whatever. What's the short apron? What's a short apron? 20 feet? I don't think it might be single limits. Right. I would say your average water is Right. I think, you know, if you looked at a map, it would show the road is unpaved. Okay, that would indicate a road is unpaved whether it has an apron or not, right? Uh, it should, right? Yeah, it wasn't actually had made stuff that was specifically shown paved. It does show the apron. It also shows, yeah, but it also shows the lawn still as unpaved, but we know that a good and flat, and flat road, all that section yes. is that an apron that goes out? No, that would not be. Sinclair Road is that an apron that goes out? You know, 300, 400 feet? No, no, that wouldn't be an apron. Better not be. Okay, the other thing, just you know, Hilltop is drive, not road. It's the fourth from the bottom, Hilltop Drive. Does that make it not a class anything? Unclassified. Is is Wilson Road an apron that goes out by NIMS? I mean, I the ATVs are, but they're running on that all day long. They are. They're not supposed to be. That's another part of the discussion. That that's where I vote against the sheriff's department. And the ATV twenty five mile an hour speed limit signs are those town signs or? Those are our club signs. Those are green ATV clubs. Yeah. Because it would be nice. Um, to at least have those signs removed 
you know, for now we, we owe it to the people to have an ordinance amendment. Um, but under the current ordinance, class two roads not allowed. Honestly, I had a ton of go by my house and the dirt bikes were way louder and right. worse. Um, and they're completely illegal. Um, a lot of them aren't though. And I said that I lost any power over this around that makes sense, but they shouldn't have you know, we as the town checking on Wilson Road, first portion of my road, Wilson Road, and Long Road, just to make sure that this signage is in accordance with the ordinance. Yes, we, we do have, we've made a couple of corrections, we have more to do. <coughs> And we have an issue to identify me about that under the current ordinance. So, so I know that they're showing a lot of their maps as being one of the identified trails. But I noticed that the sign beside, um, there's signs in multiple of these roads that are partially paved that say do not go like on Sinclair, they put a sign up that says ATV is not allowed once it turns to pavement. And that's the only road that I've seen. Yeah. Which is are they doing that on technically not the last three It's just a it's a, a segment. segment. Right. So under the current ordinance. Well, I'm, I'm they have the right to go back. I do, and then they can turn around and come back, but they just go right down to Route 100 C and continue, <laughs> which is neither here nor there. That's the state of Call my sheriff's department. Yeah. yeah. So, what okay. are we going to do here? Yep. Exactly. So, I, do we, it sounds like there's some. Um, Interest in posting. Okay. In posting this list more complete, the way it is, the way it is on saying on unpaved. To use this um, section of the ordinance that says an annual posting and public notice of risk of the use as for the ordinance, like. I think I'm hearing people are listening to doing that. It's spending our time creating this list and supporting it, meeting public meeting about it, hosting it, a good use of our time. I would say it's a great use of our time considering how frequently I get our signs on this. But we were talking about making amendments to the ordinance. So this is essentially. You're not going to make ordinance. We are not going to take ordinance as quickly as we have issues today. And this we can do quickly. Ordinance amendments we cannot do quickly. And if we do, if we get to the point where we actually agree on the not amendment, then there's a 60 day term before it gets in. So we're we're months out from it wouldn't be for this season. We're too late. It'll be the winter ATV season. Yeah. <laughs> if it listed all class three and class four roads, I, I mean, if it was more inclusive with all class three roads that are missing, and well, if we don't, we could just say maybe all class fours because yeah, we don't there's a bundle of them and they're usually not named they're usually town highway such and such they're, they're not a named highway no, hold on one second. Sorry. just one second i'll go to the chair so you Governor, was your was your question with regard to this list that that there are class three roads that are not on the There are class three roads doing it for all class three roads, but for all class three roads. Couldn't would would it be sufficient to simply that our ordinance currently stands. Mm -hmm. 
few minutes ago that uh, in that that is the record. So, uh, so. I think there's confusion on which roads are past the So that's really the big I, I think we are part of the problem for the confusion because we authorize roads and then unauthorized roads and we've gone back and forth on quite a few. So, I mean, there's definitely confusion out there on what roads are open, which ones are not. And on a compound that on top of this notice, uh, and there are apps out there nowadays that you can see the roads and the roads and I don't have access to that so Maybe some coordination with Green Mountain TV. But if they're getting the data on to upload these apps from us, well, it's been pretty, you know, we've been authorizing highways and unauthorizing highways back and forth. So it could be pretty confusing. Are they up to date with what we, our latest position? I mean, we really need to get that ordinance done so that we can eliminate this confusion. So right now we're in the middle of our the current season. And I think we need to make sure that we are addressing the issues we have right now. So we have a lot of them. How we address those issues right now, I think there's a number of things we have to do. We have to get those signs cleaned up. Like that needs to happen. That aren't places that they shouldn't be. Um, and I think it is personally, I feel, and you guys can all disagree that that's totally fine, but I feel that it's really important to publish which words are accessible. And that means that it's not on this list, it's not accessible. Um, I think that's a really important thing to do. You want to put it on a Facebook page? I don't care where it goes. It can go in our meeting minutes. I mean, people we'll read the meeting minutes. Yeah. So. If it needs to be sent to the photo, uh, yeah, that's it's available. Actually distribute it to very specific people, probably our distribution list, for our meeting minutes and other activities. And that way everyone is aware, we're communicating widely um, and unbiasedly. So we're let's try to make sure that we're informing everybody. Uh, Supporting people need the support on both on either side of the pro versus con on ATVs. It doesn't matter. We need to make sure that we are we as a town are communicating clearly. And just to be clear, this list Brian sent out on his list. Yeah. So this one. So we'll be sending this list of documents. I mean, this list, but it needs to be updated. Yeah, and I would also suggest that, you know, one of these, I don't think it's a bad idea that the town highway numbers associated with these canceling. That gets a little. I, I can do that if, if the board likes it originally started out that way. Uh, that is how we ended up with the problem with Clay Hill and Quat Road, because part of Clay Hill and and Quat Road is all Town Highway 7. Our road names don't 100% match up with. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I can easily add that. In some ways, it would make it clearer if the section of Plain Hill is, you know, that first section is all class two. So, in some ways, if you had, you know, Town Highway 7, Clay Hill slash Cut Road, and then you had Clay Hill, the portion is class three, that's Town Highway number X. Are you recommending that we renumber? Oh my gosh. No, 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 Well, you're, you're saying Town Highway 7 and then a trans. Well, well, what Brian is saying is, is um, Town Highway 
we set up as a class two highway. I understand. It is, it is all of Clay Hill plus all of Butler. Mm -hmm. And then Clay Hill continues beyond you know, the intersection of Butler. That is number, is it? 18. 12. 18. 12. No, 12. Is that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, I can add town highway numbers to this list and try and clarify it a little bit uh, for folks that know and are familiar with the town highway numbers. So, Beth, how are you thinking we're going to get this out to the public? If we approve this list as written, We'll we'll literally read it out in our minutes meeting. There's an amazing number of people who read our minutes. I the, I understand that. I understand. Um, and then we should publish it too. We should publish okay. that. Brian should publish the conference forum to Facebook. I'll throw it on the front front page of our website and then circulate the link. Um, we'll put it on the bulletin board. When you got the ATV ordinance from our neighboring towns, did we get one from Waterville? I'd have to go back and look. I'm just curious if if Evan's seeing ATV traffic on Plot Road, is the Waterville end open for ATVs? It has it on the map. Whether or not it's open, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. So that's maybe that's why the traffic is coming up Plot Road is because Waterville has it open. And that's paved what, for half a mile or so? That's it. That's Waterville. No, the paved section. Is this Cambridge? Plot Road is in Cambridge? Some of it. The paved section in Waterville. Beth, you'll see this All little right. single sign by and go by. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, okay. Oh, my God. Uh, I just want to wait. I just want to circle back. Kirsten. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have a few questions. Yeah. No, Kirsten. Okay. Hi, Kirsten. Uh, ask my few questions. Are all at once. Yeah. Um, so, the thanks. So, I'm just trying to get a clear understanding of who in the town government has the authority to designate which roads are open to ATVs and which roads are not. What is the process and the procedure? And then who in town government has the authority to take away these privileges if the ordinance such as speed and safety is not being enforced? Um, okay, second question. Who paid for the class four section of Poetic Road to be upgraded in 2019? Was it VASA or the town? Third question, Route 100C is a 50 mile an hour state highway with a lot of heavy truck traffic and it is a bad intersection for anybody, especially ATVs without directional equipment. ATVs have to travel up and down the road over 150 feet in order to go from Rocky Road to Hoag Road and back. Does the town have permission from the state to allow ATVs to travel on 100C as opposed to crossing 100C? Uh, so on the updating the access to roads that falls into the ordinance that's in place and we were talking just a few minutes ago about how um, if we were to change the ordinance we would have to come to an agreement on what the ordinance says the board and then we would have a process that would take approximately six weeks after that um, Correct me if I'm wrong at anything I said, but after the board approves the ordinance changes, there's an actual um, public meeting that allows public feedback, and it has to go through a six week process before the ordinance would be in place. Uh, so the board would be the ones to initiate that. Um, the Hoag Road update, from what I understand, the ATV Club updated upgraded um, upgraded a portion of the Hoag Road and paid for that. The so town did not. And in terms of usage of 100s in any other state highway, we cannot authorize usage of a state highway. Um, from what I gather, they can cross a state highway, but cannot ride down a state highway without state permission. Is it your assumption that they probably got state permission? I don't know that 100C is. They yeah. did get state permission for 100C in between, specifically in between Rocky Road and Hawaii Road. Uh, they 
change the select board some number of years ago asking mm -hmm. for our endorsement of that. The select board declined to provide an endorsement um, for much the reasons that you're you're saying that it's a pretty fast section of road, mm -hmm. um, but it is a state road, so we recognize that we have the state can do what the state wants to do. But we did not provide an endorsement for that that course of action, but the state did approve it. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. So, um, just questions on what repercussions does a person have if their uh, road is on here and they're being impacted? If their road is available to ATVs yeah. and they're being impacted, it has a yes. Um, they can come. One, if there is laws being broken, we have a full discussion that we continue to have about law enforcement. Yeah. So that's one thing. And I would still encourage you to call the sheriff's department, even if they don't want to take the call. Uh, that's one piece. And also, um, you can come to the board with your concerns, and we can definitely consider them um, if and when we look at changing the ordinance, which we have talked about um, and started discussions on. The second question is there's a site at the end of the lab well, has been there, it's still there, where it meets Clay Hill. And it basically says something about this is for ATVs, and it definitely alienates people like me who would have liked to walk on that road. Now I feel like, no, this is an ATV path. It's it, it it's a class four road and it should be open to the public. It is. So why did they have a sign that says like I don't, I don't know if this is ATVs only. I'll, I'll go right down the exact yeah. wording. Yeah. Club members only. Yeah, it very much says only. It's like, I'm not allowed. Yeah, it says that I'm not involved with us at this point. And, and I think the signs have to get worded differently for, but if they're a passport road, they're a public road. It's very yeah. uninclusive. Also, the road is such a mud bath now because of all the traffic, ATV traffic, that it's actually unusable for anybody but it wants to walk. Can huh. you add to your list, Brian, to look at those two signs? Sure. Well, and find and find out whether VASA has authority over our roads to say only VASA members. That uh, is actually in our ordinance. It says only VASA members. It's in our ordinance, and it's actually in the state law. That they have they have the jurisdiction over our roads. No, 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 no but they, they have to belong to the in order to use okay. Yeah. So, so they only is applying ATV usage, not yeah, so ATV usage only, or something. Right. Yeah. That that's what I'm imagining. I I probably spoke too soon, not having actually read the sign up there. But what I'm imagining it says is in reference to the fact that the only ATVs that are supposed to be on the roads are VASA members. Uh, and yeah, the way it's worded, it definitely is alienating as far as a public person walking by and wanting to use it. Yeah, okay. and I, I don't deny that. Okay. I, I think I understand their intention, but I, I have no comment on whether they were effective at communicating that or not. And there also may have been an issue with the people with Jeeps out four wheeling that were using it. As well. and but they have a right to it. Yeah, right? they. that's another thing they can't. Uh, yeah. Restrict the use of is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Brian, thank you. Okay. So Thanks. I'm going to follow up on the. I can send you a picture. So can we? I'm just going to have. Um, should I take one more question from the audience? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, just quickly, just um, I'm happy to hear the discussion around the clear communication out to the public. Is, um, you know, you can't expect good behavior if you're not telling people the right information what they need to know to, to respect those those rules. And, and as the season goes on, bad habits are being created, so it's going to get harder to get people to comply with the ordinance. And, you know, and uh, so, if if we can definitely get a commitment from the board and Brian to get that communication out in a variety of ways very, very soon. 
first. Just a quick one. Um, Clay Hill Road says on, on page 40, and there has been a long history of folks coming up Woods Hill dirt, coming up Clay, and then making the turn on the left up the plot road or straight up by Clay Hill, the dirt park. And it, it's ongoing, it's, it's an access point. This says it's, it's not allowed, and just giving a heads up is probably meant for a lot of feedback about it. But I think it's important that it be pointed out because it's an accident for it to happen. It's hard to believe something hasn't happened already. As I recall, I, th I think there's a sign at the, right there at the junction that says no ATVs allowed past this point. Um, I, think there, I think there is. Yeah. Not that they're not still using not, them yeah. close, but there is a sign there that says no ATVs past this point. Okay. Um, I, was, I was wondering how the I would incorporate this. Should we have Brian update it? Send it out to the board member, just a quick review, and say yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move with this and the changes, unless I hear other ones. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but you'll send. We'll send it. I'll send it. Out. Yeah. I'll send the updated list out so you have an opportunity. <laughs> is, is, you, is it your sense that there's any more that have paved that aren't on this? I don't list? believe so. Okay, so basically you're going to give us some more class three unpaved and class four? Yeah. Okay. That, I just want to know the unpaved. That's what, I, that's what I'm expecting, at least. I don't think I missed any... Uh, I don't think that I missed any Thank you. class three roads that have significantly paved portions. Right. Okay, but so we'll we'll check it when we get the list. Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. And if anyone knows of any right off the top of your head, reach out. Okay, let's move on. So we're about half an hour behind schedule. Planning for assessor replacement. All right. So. As you recall, thanks for this. Uh, we're on packet page 24. Um, as you recall, we've been having conversations with our current assessor, Terry, about. Uh, I'm going to step away from You guys, please talk. Okay. Uh, we've been having conversations with our current assessor, Terry. Um, for providing assessor services. Terry is looking at stepping back and finding another a replacement for her that she would help train and coordinate working with, excuse me, working with multiple towns in the area. Um, we had the first proposal on that. We've had a little bit of back and forth outside of the meeting, mostly between uh, Duncan was taking kind of the lead on that for the board. Now is our time to kind of bring the board up to speed and kind of continue the discussion and look at where do we want to go next. Uh, so I have Duncan's questions in black and Terry's responses in red. I just want to be clear that I um, am so some of these aren't my questions. Oh, okay. Some of these are things that other board members posed and I submitted in one email in the interest of not bombarding parents. Yeah, so overall, I think it's a pretty good program. Uh, assessor as a job in general is not well represented. There's not very many people doing the job anymore. Um, so it's, yeah, it's kind of a struggle uh, to find people. When we did go out to bid to hire Terry, we did have another candidate. 
Um, so there was an alternative at that time. Uh, we like Terry's approach and she came with good recommendations from neighboring communities and from our former assessor. Uh, so we chose Terry over the other guy, but there are other folks out there. But one of the things we liked about Terry's initial proposal was something up in this realm of developing kind of the future candidates um, and people that would continue to do the job five, 10 years into the future and not just, you know, we weren't hiring another person who was going to, you know, retire in a couple of years without helping us develop a future plan. I can, if I can just interject, my, my struggles with uh, the very first question, that's a priority for myself is, I thought there was a lot of value in the previous assessor and having that rolling reappraisal. And I'm, I'm really uh, disappointed that NIMIX, you know, opted not to continue with this, but when we were questioning Terry, I got the impression that rolling reappraisal was something that she could do and would consider. And yet when I read her answer, I'm not sure what she's saying. Uh, it looks like she's saying no, and that we should think about having a, hiring somebody to do a full reappraisal every 10 years. Well, the reason we're trying to, to avoid that reappraisal every 10 years is having the rolling, rolling reappraisal. And I, I thought it worked really well. And I, I'm, I'm struggling with the, her answers here. I don't, it's not very clear. It's the, the, if I can try and summarize it, uh, uh, incorporating a rolling reappraisal into the position is not something that she's currently proposing. Whether that's something we're interested in developing into the position or, or looking for in the future is something else. Um, but I don't believe that she has plans to incorporate it into her proposal. How did, how did a rolling reappraisal work? They do part of a town, a quarter of a town every year. And so, so the taxes in that portion will go up. No, no. Yeah. At the end yeah. of five yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and actually, I mean, Rosemary can attest to this. That was the first reappraisal we've ever had. And we didn't have one appeal on assessment. Right? People forgot they were appraised four years ago. Well, they knew it because they got the book, except for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I do want to offer one point of clarification, and this unfortunately is not really a clarification as much as I don't properly understand the difference either. What we had was not truly a rolling reappraisal. Terry has commented on it. Robin had commented mm -hmm. on it. The folks from Nemeric had commented on it. I am not clear what the difference, when they describe a rolling reappraisal, it sounds a lot like what we did. Yeah. But they have always corrected me that we did not have a rolling reappraisal. Well, we had what they gave us. <laughs> we had what they gave us and- Are they willing to give us what they gave us? No. <coughs> They're not willing to do either. But when we're talking, and it, it doesn't matter so much because we all know what we had and we have a certain expectation, but the technical rolling reappraisal is slightly different. And I do not understand the difference between the two. It's satisfying the purposes of the state in terms of the Any questions? They want to call the wall, they want to contact the other They have not prices. They have not prices. Well, they're taking on very few things. Well, they do have a, a school property tax, I suppose they do have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a big job. Um, 
So what are we going to do with this? Like, are are these answers something? Did these? I understand we're not happy with the answers. I get that part, but does that negate our interest, or does it not? Did you hear us do that? I kind of stepped back because my got back in the town. Um, when I had talked with Ron Jensen, he was he sounded like he was definitely interested in the wall and the concept. My my primary interest was to have it as a potential option. Um, you know, but we might not even do it next year, but you know. And, and she made she made a point of saying that a VPA three is the minimum requirement, which she is. Nowhere in the MOU does she tell us what we would be getting from um, you know one, two, or three. Yeah. I think that's fairly important to know. I think it's actually a four that's required for reappraisal. It must have said four. There's a master appraiser and a VPA three. There's one, two, three, and a master appraiser. Uh, I believe. In her answer, it does say four. It, well, she has four ones. Yeah. I have a statement to say, you know, actually, no this. Um, but. Um, so, I sorry, what was your point about Ron? That Ron was interested in Ron well, Side Park. Right? I, I'm with the Eric. I really think that the concept is a good one, whether Terry thinks it is or you know, isn't. Um, to me, it's kind of immaterial. She has a proposal uh, for an MOU. If we don't like it, we can go to them, try and get something different. Another option that we could talk about is a circuit rider position shared between a couple of towns. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of her concept, but, you know, we could do it. I, I'm just in favor of, of having more options rather than once. And I think what she's offering us right now is minimum assessing services, which will require us to, when the state tells us we need to be appraisal, um, to go out and pay $150,000 or $400,000 to have the whole town rear price. It doesn't make sense to me to do it that way. I, I think it makes much more sense to do it systematically and methodically. So if she's not offering what it is that we want, and I don't, you know, that's my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the world's opinion is. My opinion is she's not offering us what we want for me. And also, we don't. Um, I was. I actually called Brian about this too because I have a hard time saying that we're interested. I'm not, I don't have a hard time saying we're interested in having the conversation. I think that's appropriate. But I do have a hard time talking about a commitment when we don't know who this person is that she keeps referring to. Like we should be interviewing that person. They're the ones that they're going to be doing the job. Ultimately, we shouldn't be. It shouldn't be about Terry. Is this her like mentee? I don't think she has a person yet. She thought she had a mentee or something. She had, she has someone in mind. I don't think that they. Uh, yeah, I don't think she's got everybody on the side of the document. Yeah. Not she doesn't have five signatures on him on the either. Yeah, I think that's kind of where she's stuck. But if we come back and and tell her that we're interested in meeting with this person before we sign. I think that that's a not an unreasonable request and that we should be able to work that out. You know, if we have a genuine interest in signing and this person has a genuine interest in accepting the job, us meeting each other before either of us commit is pretty reasonable. Pretty critical. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, to Duncan's point, should we put an RFP up there and ask this person to respond to the RFP? Yeah. Use whatever you want from Terry's MIU. Like, I feel like it's a big enough service that we should go out to this no matter what. Isn't that part of our recruitment policy? And the other thing that 
that I'm struggling with is the uh, one day a week in Johnson. Well, Nimerick's would not continue, Robin would not continue uh, because we do not have zoning. And so they do not know what has been done in the community without going out and check it. Well, that's a springtime activity after April 1st is when you, the, the tax rate is set on what you have as of April 1st. And when we had listers, it was a full-time job for them for about two, three months. And they went out to every single home and they uh, basically evaluated each property on if any improvements have been made. Well, how is this one person one day a week going to fulfill that obligation? And we still don't have zoning and we, you know, who knows if we ever will, but. I mean, the reality is what towns in our area are going to have zoning throughout their town. I think it's highly unlikely that any towns around here are going to have town-wide zoning. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, I was going to say, just start down the team here. Okay, well, I park more so. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah. Whereas Cambridge wow. does, I don't think, has a spectrum. Uh, yeah. So, I guess my understanding of was she knew about the place that that would be constructed or whatever and planned out one day where she had all of the town. Maybe there was a second day, but it wasn't a three month long process for one person for the day or two. Maybe that's where she's seeing that one day a week for that chunk of time a person. But it really takes a little bit longer. I guess she's not local. So she is not really gonna know what's going on out in the community. Like Rose was live local and you didn't put up an outhouse without her seeing it and coming in taxing or assessing you on it. That's what, and, and she went to every single property every spring. Well, she didn't go to every property. She, she went to property, she visited the properties that she thought had. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and if they saw something that looked like a building and stuff, yeah. But some of that, I think, was, you know, Rose, you know, the, the listers had, they had a schedule. Um, Rose went away, to, you know, remember, so she didn't go anywhere. You know, should have been doing more. I, I think some of that work could be spread out mm -hmm. over the course of the year, so there wasn't quite the demand after the But I, I, your point is well taken. That's one of the, it's one of the questions that I think your question will yeah. answer. So, what do we want to do? Well, do we, Brian, have you had, have you heard definitely from, um, from Terry that she has no interest in in doing uh, a rolling rate appraisal and having a, a qualified individual who could make that available as an option to tax I wouldn't say that I have had that definitely. I wouldn't say that it's been a definitive conversation. I will press her on that and get a, a clear Beth, answer. Beth, you had you know you had kind of thrown out Ron or Jessica had sort of jumped into the conversation. You threw out the possibility. Ron threw out the possibility of getting, getting together and discussing what the contract would actually look like. I still think there's some, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Tara. I think she's good. Um, I just don't think what she's giving us is long term um, the best thing for the community. Um, you know, she's offering a very basic package of now, if she, if she said we can work towards a rolling reappraisal three years from now when we would have a person trained in case we were any good, I'd be uncomfortable signing to get all yeah. That seems like a definitive so answer. So, um, yeah. 
when we interviewed her, she said that. So is there interest in having uh, us get together with other towns and having us chat with other towns? We don't have artists interested. Um, it sounds like Linda from Wolf that may be interested. May also be an opportunity to talk to the students about sure from that stuff. For what it's worth. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> all right. Um, but we can also put feelers at other surrounding towns to see if anyone else is interested in this discussion. At the very least, having us sit down with those two boards, two towns, we have not met with them in years. And we used to meet every year. Just you. Just the chair. Just a chair. Uh, I was going to have a delegate, Duncan. Metaphor. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but is there interest in having board representation to get to have these couple of these discussions? Well, I, I think there is. I mean, if if I think he thought Brian yeah. could make a phone call to Terry and ask her, does she is she even willing to consent? Yeah, I think we'll be She says yes. What if we throw Terry completely out of the discussion and just talk with her towns on what the needs are, what all of our needs are, and what our desires are, and get something out on a board? And if we come to an agreement on what our needs are, then cool, we can work towards accomplishing that goal together. Instead of bringing it all around Terry, which is not about Terry, but it's about what our towns need. Would you be interested in being part of that conversation? Thank you. Is that a yes? Uh, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you, Duncan. And Rosemary or Brian, are either of you interested in that? Are you interested in that, too? I, I love her, Rosemary, because I mean, she's as, as a mom. Okay, and Brian, are you good with those two representing? Be out of the off the hook for the moment. Sure. We'll keep you busy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will initiate that. Getting that going. Cool. Thank you both. That will be excellent. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, next up, we've got continuing next step discussions for. Uh, Economic Development Coordinator uh, and how we want to spend the money we've raised for uh, economic development. Uh, I have an updated draft of the job description, which I think reflects the wishes of the select board from the last discussion. Uh, whether we want to use this as a template for a contract or uh, a hired part-time position, we still haven't decided. You're interested in part time employee or contract? Or do you want to say I could go either way. I, I think that's an opportunity, another potential sharing position to share. But in that case, I would be more inclined to an employee proposal. But the Long County Planning Commission also has the ability now to do service agreements, and they could provide service. Okay, what is it? Where are you? I think contract and service you know, this year, um, and we could find another. Or if we could find a similar that's fair, really fast, that would be great. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts? 
Well, I guess in some ways agreeing with both of them. I, I prefer an employee for long-term benefit, but with the amount of money we have, um, I, I think we have to look at contracting. Mayor Mark? Um, I, I think we're going to have to do a contract though, so. Okay, I think that solves that. What's your opinion? I agree. I'm all for a contract here. I think the I think the first year, no matter, frankly, if it were, well, I guess this year, if we had someone all lined up, I would still say contract for the first year to see how it shakes out. Um, yeah, potentially with the opportunity to hire someone. And it'll give us time to talk to other towns again. Maybe they want to share an employee. Them all the way around. We might as well just shut down the select boards and do county government. <laughs> That's how the rest of the world does. Oh, I know. You know, well, a few that there's no county government. Um, You're ignoring it? I was for a moment, yes. <laughs> Casey. Yeah. Um, here's your fantasy. Uh, there will be a new village trustee at some point, and if if in fact the trustee there is, is hmm? there is a new village trustee. Oh, there already is. I think you mean administrator, uh, or manager, no, not trustee. trustee. Okay, on okay. well, that election already. <laughs> they did. <laughs> They're yeah. going to be here oh, okay, fine, fine. Okay, then. Well, okay, but now there's a complete board. Like we fill that step. Right. Okay, there's a complete board. Uh, if there's a chance that the trustees would entertain a question or react to a petition to again put that question for orders because of the time, um, that and if it was if it passed, then that would affect obviously the amount of money available. Would that tie to the length? of a contract that you're thinking of? Well, I think that our 40,000 that was our question that pertains to you. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that our money um, is very specifically for a uh, fiscal year which starts July 1st. Right. And so it would go for July uh, 1st through right. June 30th. Mm -hmm. um, so my guess <coughs> is that the because the trustees don't have their annual meeting until April of next year, that we would not fall into the same fiscal calendar, at least starting off, okay. um, but potentially the following year. Thank you. And if the voters, I don't think they got enough runway to put something out, call a special town meeting, put that vote before them, because their tax bills go out like April 1st or something. Okay. So they, have, they kind of already had that discussion. Right, at the last village meeting. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they only had one candidate for election who actually submitted the paper. So they decided to cancel the village meeting. And they also made a specific motion to not have the question about okay. economic benefit and survival. They kind of already said yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So that's that. Um, in terms of what we want, so now that we know contracts, we would need to put something out to get responses, and this is the attached right. Yep. <coughs> a lot of great information on the contracts that we use are I would also strongly recommend that we reach out to the more county. They may have some capacity. And the town has, in the past, the town has worked, you know, for this the town. It's easy to well, apply for and administrate grants. And they, have, they have lots of capacity. I mean, I don't know if they have lots of capacity, they have lots of towns. Do they have, do they do like, um, okay, 
get to the current front of us. But do they have people who do design and visionary work also? <laughs> they, plan, okay. they plan for yesterday. Uh, and do they have people who specialize in industrial parks? Um, they have certainly have some people who have some experience in that regard. But again, it's it's you know it might be one of those questions where there might be other, they may know other because they have a lot more dealers out in the community um, that are meeting with their constituents regularly. They might know some else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, they they just would do them. Okay. Um, cool. Before we leave the economic policy piece, this is another thing I want to do shoehorn in there. Um, I have heard recently that Morristown has an active cooking application in for a major industrial plant. So that's not particularly good news for us. As far as the economic development piece, I, I wanted to just bring everybody's attention. We we do have a plan prepared by Regional Engineering. What we don't have is a final plan with updated cost estimates and we don't have permits. So I would I would think that we do have to investigate use of proper funds. To make sure that the use of our plans could be used to update the plan and um, whatever we need to do to get an active review approval, if that's the route that we want to go. Because bottom line is, when we talk about the industrial park, so we have that active review approval plan, that's all it is. It's um, so I think that gets back to the job description, right? So the summary of duties and responsibilities, because it talks about identifying promising growth opportunities, and strategies. I feel like we already maybe know what these are because we already have a long list of projects with various degrees of priority. Um, and we're also going to be having the ARPA discussion. So I kind of feel like asking this person for that visionary information is actually not what we need right now. To your point, I think we need more practical applications of active 50 permits, helping with our farm usage, figuring out what our next steps or industrial park or whatever um, comes out of our uh, discussions. I feel like this person is going to be very important in all of that. I think I, I think it's important that that discussion on Wednesday that we put that out there more broadly than at the bottom of front porch forum. Is there is there a way we can get more public input in that? Because I thought you were calling people. I can call people. I would be delighted to call people. Do it. Please. Um, because I maybe just a blurb actually in front porch form that says Wednesday, this is your time. Town of Johnson has an extra three quarters of a million dollars. What is what are your dreams? If you know, it's gonna go out because it's in front porch form, I think today, but it's one of those you gotta click on it things, which people people want gossip, they don't want to read about they don't want to click. That's don't true. People click. do not want to click. It shouldn't be. It should have been a regular post. post. I been. saw it. Um, did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know so I think to that point, though, Mark, we should all push out the message, whatever our vehicles of communication are, to get a wide audience. Yeah. Okay. Lois? Somebody who's out in the public has been heard in the information. But Mark has said three quarters of a million dollars. That's the first I heard the amount of money. I don't know if too much. Um, Isn't it seven million? You know, maybe a lot of people have, have heard something like that, but I haven't seen anything that gave any kind of framework or 
laid out in four categories that proper money can be spent in or that's where it is. Even any general discussion to think about it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, Wednesday is two days from today. Just kept it obvious here. Uh, and front porch forum. Previous days. And front porch forum doesn't publish every day necessarily. So if we're going to put something flashy out with attend your voice matters. There's lots of money at stake for our town. You know, show up, be here. Eric, we call WLDB. Have... Hmm? Call WLDB. Yeah. Oh, that be, yeah. Yeah. All right. Eric's we won't have pizza, <laughs> but we'll be dreaming about it. <laughs> um, Actually, anyway. that, would, that would be good because they would broadcast it through the morning or something on that day. Yeah. Do you want to reach out or do you want me to? I want you. I'm probably in the middle of the year. I'm going to say um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the open endedness of the framework of the discussion. Um, I have a sticky feeling that a lot of, we're going to have some people come in and throw out some ideas for things that candidly just aren't going to have. That's okay. Um, it, is okay. it is okay. Um, I just think. From my own perspective, I think it would have been better for us to have taken a little bit of time and sketched out a few of our ideas of things that I think that are priorities, um, and then have people react to those and offer other thoughts. Um, I I think it's going to be a turkey shoot. I mean, it depends. I'm I'll, just going to say I'll just tell you what I say to my people that work with me. It depends on what you're valuing in that particular discussion. <laughs> Uh, if it's really about brainstorming, then all things are on the table. And yeah. if you're valuing like what is the next step and let's go, which I think is a follow-up step. Um, but I don't think we should dismiss any idea. Like we close a lot of doors by dismissing any of this. I, and I will not, I will not sit here and say I'm going to close the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we could probably put some buckets out there. From we should actually we'll take our list. We'll put something in front of people. Maybe we won't publish it in, in advance, but we'll just take our priority list and throw it out there. It's like here are some things that were on our priority list that we would consider projects that may be eligible for this thing. Bring a crazy idea anyway. Cryptocurrency. Um, what? We need our own cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Johnson Point. Okay. Um, is there anything, any feedback you want to give on this summary of duties or responsibilities? Or what instruction are we giving? Contrast template or contracting services. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Wednesday will probably give us some direction about. I think it's a really good start. Yeah. I think for the second paragraph, we should get rid of everything except the very last sentence, which is the ideal candidate will be an individual who's familiar with Johnson's history and be able to leverage our unique advantages to achieve a brighter future. I'll leave it at that. And I think we need to talk about things like. Um, Experience with activity permitting, for example, and other infrastructure and counseling uh, projects as well. Yeah, I, I, I can make the, those changes and a, a few others. This was definitely written, it was based off of what we had already written for an employee. So it yeah. still leans in that direction, but I can rework it for a contract. Cool. Okay. Excellent. I think it's Vermont State University now. It is. It's official. It was on TV. Oh, I saw it on TV this morning with the swirling mountains. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a great design. Um, Thank you. 
All right. So uh, I'm, I'm not very clear what we're doing. Here. Brian's going to update for contract services. And, and we're going to see it again before it goes out. Um, we will. I'm also going to talk to LCPC um, before our next meeting to find out if they've got any interest in and capacity for being directly involved or you know if they would maybe just help us identify candidates okay um i would like to just make a proposal on sorry i didn't see this earlier um it was a meeting ago i think that we had lisa say till the very end of the meeting which is probably very unfair of us so i would just propose that we move number 11 up right now okay and then you can choose to stay or not. Yeah, they're very interesting. <laughs> All right. So number eleven deals with our. Uh, let's see. This is on page. This is mostly going to be on page thirty-three. Um, but to make it kind of official for everybody who might not know. Uh, Lisa has entered her resignation as our recreation coordinator. Uh, you know, she's an outstanding job for us, which is great to miss. Yeah. Uh, we have not accepted it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have. So, Brian, you have page 32, but then you also have a separate. I do. Uh, and I'll cover that. Um, uh, one more thing, uh, Lisa has offered to stay on as our, uh, Lisa has offered to stay on to assist in the transition, you know, provided we're making good progress towards the transition. So uh, we really appreciate that offer and, and you staying on to help. So, I'll, we, I'll stay on my current page. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, mm -hmm. our, I have here uh, the recreation coordinator job description. Uh, on, packet page on packet page 33. First of all, I see a couple of changes. That the I've still got uh, I must have grabbed the one while this was still mixed with recreation and community development. So we've got to strike that. So to be clear, the one that she handed out is the correctly adopted. Uh, the one that I handed out is, was the job posting that we went out. So, okay. The job posting from last time? Yes. Um, so we have a job description and we have uh, advertising posting. So what's in the package is? The job description. Job but, but you said community development coordinator is not part of the current. It is not part of the, the current jobs. Um, our current job description for Lisa was mislabeled because it this is not your current duties. Oh, is everything else that's in the packet correct? I believe so. I don't see anything under the duties that are wrong. Uh, it's just that it is titled RCDC. Oh, yeah. Should I stand out the correct one that was on the table? Uh, that's the posting, not that's the, the posting. job description. The RCDC under summarized supervision and the Uh, on the second page, it refers to RCDC again, uh, but it only refers to the Recreation Committee as the oversight. So it is, I don't believe, I believe that this is the correct one, but I'm going to have to do a closer reading because I obviously missed at least the community development part. 
And then the essential tasks, um, third one down, where it's mentioned the support and scheduling and activities. Yep. It happens in Nelson Duba Field. It's no longer in Nelson Duba Field. Well, it's still in Nelson Duba Field, but it's done so the region. Yes. As well, so not like the recreation coordinator to schedule that. Yep. Supply line. Okay. Are you going to approve that expense? I'll pay for it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So um, the job description. So, two things. One is that I think it's actually more important that we post the, the job posting. Then it is we get the job description. Yeah, we're we can on work on the job description. Yeah, and I think we need to work on the job description. Um, but for the actual posting, we should get this out as soon as possible, and we should put the um, inclusivity word that's on the check of page thirty-two from a different thing altogether. That box in here too, in the posting. Um, Uh, the let's see on the fourth paragraph, Town of Johnson is an equal opportunity employer and prohibits discrimination. I can rephrase that using our blurb copy from the inclusivity statement. If you could just grab it from the administrative assistant. That would, yeah, that, that was a good one. one. Um, it, expands, it has all of this and more. It's not, it's not, it's right here. It's on packet page 32. That's what I'm referring to. Um, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well throw in this drew while you're at it. Well, that's a very different. I don't think that's a good idea. And I don't think it, okay. and it's not that I don't think it's a good idea. It's that I think it. Careful and set expectations. Like, so we're looking for somebody who, first of all, they have the same skill sets. I don't know. And also, uh, the RAC coordinator, I know from experience, <laughs> just being on the RAC committee before there was a RAC coordinator, it's a lot of hours that are not normal hours. At this point. But I mean, they're going to like, sports activities at night quite often. I think it's better than it was because we have set office hours now, um, but it's still it's kind of erratic. I have a few points to talk about too. Uh, yeah, you have points about the posting specifically. Uh, not the posting specifically, the one thing I just take out is it says health committees organize recreation and skate park program. I just take health committees out and just organize. And then, you know, if, if the health of the committees does fall into that, there's a lot of organizing and stuff that goes on during those daytime work hours. Yep. But otherwise, I thought it seems to be still fairly accurate. So, Ryan, give this job description. Just Lisa said she had some stuff on the job description. No, I just have some stuff on the job itself that's going to be thought about prior to the hiring. Let's hear it. Um, 
something needs to be done about the personal vehicle use. This is becoming kind of a running joke now. It's not a funny joke. Uh, it's, it's a problem. Uh, and then the pay for holidays is listed as days you work, but you usually work Sunday to Sunday a little bit each day with three days in the office. Um, so considerations for maybe prorating it to 24 hours, you know, which is whatever percentage, 40 for the holiday pay. Um, considering potential for cell phone plan through the town, similar to what Jason has. Um, I've changed my number already since I got the job and I pay for my own cell phone and I get texts at eight o'clock on Sunday mornings about our stuff. Um, so if I have a phone provided, I just feel like I would be less like <laughs> when they come in, you know? Um, and I'm considering calling it more parks and recreation because we make it that feel like the baseball diamonds and all that stuff going basically here. The public works department is awesome and they help a ton, but the person will also be out hanging so that's the best job. That's the biggest stuff. Otherwise, it's a great job. I like it. <laughs> Just done, done identifying as that. I'm ready to go back to being me. <laughs> yes, it's a yeah. And if for the right person, it's like fantastic. Yeah, the principal of our division. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. At least that's good stuff. I mean, I wish it was fixable, but you're right. But you have to want to be the mayor of recreation. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So, are we in agreement that Brian can do? Enough on the job description in the meantime we could post. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm removing the help committees on the on the yeah, I'm removing help committees and I'm switching out the EOE statement with our more modern language. Um again, kind of as usual when we post to places that paid by the word, uh, I rewrite a shorter version of this and provide a link to the, the full document. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to see the shorter version. Okay. Just for clarification, I asked, so is it okay if I keep working until the person's hired? And then can we consider me helping train them still for a fee of pay or whatever? You know, at that time, I would, I would just like to help train them. Um, so you guys can consider it when we get to that place. That is very much appreciated. Let us talk about it. Let us think about it first. I think we all need to think about it. I need to think about it personally. If you're if you're willing to continue working until we hire somebody, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm hoping to. Have someone in the position by Saunders. Within Jason. Yeah. You don't, by chance, have somebody in mind. I do. Hopefully they'll submit a resume. Okay. Soccer season 2022. Soccer season starts in like a month. <laughs> Just so you know, it's one of these settings by soccer season. <laughs> it starts in 10 weeks. <laughs> 10 weeks. Okay. Right. I just wanted to offer one comment about one of the things that you said recently with regards to holiday pay. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it should be a simple thing, but it's not really because it's part of personal policy. So I don't think we could offer an employee something that's not that's inconsistent with personal policy. It's certainly something that we could consider if we talk about amending personal policy. But I just don't want to lead you down the garden path. No, no, I don't. I don't know if you can do anything about it in this sense, but those are my four suggestions for the position. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, more. I'd like to do a duck up then. 
Second. For the motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been fun. Just not fun enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. We're still on the season after the next time. We're over. Yeah, the season don't stop. So. Groundhog Day. Uh, okay. Thank you, Lisa. Let's moving it up. You're welcome. Uh, Employee review process. All right. So we had our first take at the uh, 360 review that we had expressed some interest in. Uh, and I think that the board, we're on page, we've gone back to packet page uh, 29 now. Um, I think the board had some general feedback. Again, this is not feedback about the employee review we did, but about the review process. Um, so it's our, our first crack at it. I think we can you know, continue to improve and do better. Madam Chair, can you? Yes, please. I, I like having the peer input. I think there's a lot of value in it and a self-evaluation because quite often in my experience, employees were harder on themselves than even their supervisor. But what I think is really missing and needs to be there is a supervisor's review as part of it. Um, maybe not to as comprehensive as what we have currently uh, had been using. It was like two or three pages worth of questions and rankings and all that. But there needs to be some supervisor input that would be where the supervisor would sit down with the employee and provide back uh, uh, input on how they're performing, where they could make improvements and all of that and reinforcing it with, hey, this is what's coming in from your peers um, and I'm seeing the same things type of discussion. It, where I like the peer input is if you're the supervisor's impression of an employee is off. And you have this certain impression of an employee on what they're doing, how they're performing, and you're getting all this feedback from peers, it could make you question your own uh, you know, biases because you may not be seeing the same thing. So I, I do like the peer input. And like I said, I do like the self-evaluation, but I think the big missing piece is Another one that would be the supervisors and would sit down with the employee. But other than that, that's where I'm at. And I think that we can, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, you know, I, I had tried to incorporate that through here, uh, but I don't, I see what you're saying, that, that, that there was a piece lacking. Uh, I think that formality of the supervisor with the employee is you still need that even yeah. with this. So my thoughts. You thinking more of a 360 review or a peer review done by peers and then that gets handed into the supervisor, the supervisor sits down with this. And I think that's the way you did it, right? It's, it's sort of a 360 review. Yeah. The way the way I did it was I, we circulated the peer reviews. I met with each it's of them. It's not really a peer review, just to be clear. It's more of a 360 because you're getting feedback from people who report to you and people who are above you. It's, it's not a peer to peer. That's that's why I was. Yeah. We're yeah. other why it's hard with members too. Right. Yeah. Peer review. Yeah. It's not really a peer review. It's more. Thank you. Uh, that's a, that's a good point but yeah I, I meant with the individuals who had filled out the peer review mm -hmm. or the 360 review um 
collected their input, worked in my own feedback for uh, the individual at the same time, and used that in addition to their self-evaluation. I think what Eric is saying is having something more formal and having the supervisor's report separated from uh, yeah. other coworkers. Yeah. Uh, and that, that that would be, there would be value in having that as a, a kind of a third layer part of the review. What I would ultimately really like to see, I think I've talked to a couple of people see where it's going and I think right now we're in a transition year but ultimately what I would like to see is that everybody has goals for the year and for somebody who is on a crew your goal for the year may be helping to you know make sure that we always have somebody covered on roads or whatever the phones already always answered or whatever I mean the goals could be small goals they could be big goals and they're about doing their job and they're also about stretching the duties of your job and then measuring against what those goals are for the year and using that as that formal evaluation. So it's not taking your job description specifically, it's more about you know, defining goals, looking ahead, defining goals, trying to accomplish something, and then measuring yourself against those accomplishments at the end of that year period. And also getting this 360 review and getting your self-evaluation and that meeting your goals part is part of the um, that formal review. Who sets the goals? The person and whoever they're going to together set the goals. So, as an employee, you definitely should. The board may be part of the people setting goals, by the way, um, because depending on who the if it's somebody on the crew, we shouldn't be setting those crew goals, but we are setting Jason's goals, and his goals are like they're all that for, for example. I'm, I'm going to offer a comment that is um, it's in opposition to that, <laughs> but I, I, I would like to see like the, the self evaluation. I would like to see some nexus between the self-evaluation and what is expected in the job description. Um, so if, you know, if a uh, thing in the job description is making sure the phones are answered all the time, great. Um, but, you know, to me, the job description is what we pay the person. It's 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 the goals and expectations that are set for that employee to do the job that needs to be done. So I I'm a firm believer that there should be some nexus. In you know in these questions, it could be something as simple as keeping the job description in mind. What are the strengths, you know, et cetera, in your current position? So so just something that you know. Let's just know if they're at least aware that there's a job description that says what they're supposed to be doing. I think that's fair. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that Brian's uh, the supervisor's evaluation should also take into account, at least to some degree, you know, the job description. Uh, for example, if there's something that that person is clearly not doing that is in the job description, one of two things needs to happen. Either we need to reevaluate the job description and see if it's still appropriate for the job, or the person needs to do what's in the job description. Yeah. And that becomes the goal that you're talking about. You know, the goal is meet, you know, bullet seven in the job description, show up to work on time. Right. Um, you know, so I, 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 I like I like the, I guess we can't call it here. Cobra. 360. 360. <laughs> I like that. You're too simple. Um, I like the self-evaluation. But again, I, I kind of this is pretty important to me. I think the self-evaluation is really fair. Yeah. 
It certainly doesn't have to be the goal. You know, the goal of 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 the but we used to have for an evaluation form. It was like I say, it was like two or three pages, and uh, readers digest it down to maybe one page. You know, take out maybe the most the heaviest meat items, and that would be part of the supervisor's uh, review. I think I could do something like that. Um, I think that. I don't know how much it's actually going to be, how much it would actually be based on the old form. If the old form was uh, thinking about this from my teacher's background, the old form was a multiple choice test. Yeah. You know, you went through and you, you picked one through four. So you picked your answer. So that took a lot of questions in order to get it. We want to turn this into more like essay responses. Mm -hmm. So they're not really too okay. compatible, but in terms of we want not want essay questions that are related to the same material. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. But it's not. So the, they're not they're not going to be phrased exactly the same. But I think I can write, you know, a few questions that would be related and would be similar. So I, I'm trying to remember the prior evaluations, but. They were very light on comments and more on, you know, grading. There, there was no official place in there for comments. Okay. There was. Was there? At the end, the person could write, you know, general comments, and the supervisor could write general comments, and both of them signed it. And what what the supervisors used to do was have the employees. Fill one of those out as the self evaluation piece. And then the two would meet and talk about, you know, there is almost, almost to a T, the employees raised in their bankers are worse than super fast. Yeah, harder. Yeah. Harder, harder than the super fast. And it, it, it was good. I'm, I'm not suggesting we go back to that old method. It was tedious. You know, it was, we actually took a job description, bulleted, yeah. you know, each one, and, and you did a ranking on the form. You know, I don't, I don't think that was particularly concerning. I have a couple of basic questions. How many people work for us? 10? 10. Work for us, but not <clears throat> that are actually um, that are employees of the town. So we on the crew we have like four be. plus Lydia plus Brian plus Lisa. And we don't have really anybody from the library. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We don't review library place, employees. Jason is supposed to do uh, evaluation of. The highway employees. Yeah. So less than 10. So less than 10 people total work for the town. Now these 360 reviews, they're not, we're not going to look at these as a select board, are we? We could if we were doing like Brian. Right. Brian. But uh, one of the highway guys. Yeah, you would typically right. look at Lisa or Jason or Brian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they're direct reports to us. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I just I don't want to be doing performance reviews of somebody. I have no idea what their job is or what them. they're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. That's fair. Thank you. Thank so you. I think that it sounds like there's some ideas out there. Yeah. Link it more closely to the job description. Uh, especially in the self evaluation and create a separate supervisor's evaluation that's also related to the job description. But uh, hey, this was our first stab at this. Yep. So. Yeah, I thought it went off well for our, our first try. Um, Check and adjust. Yep. So, is if we get that 
another uh, re revision of this. Who's on the docket to be reviewed next that we could use as a guinea pig? The absolute next person uh, who's up right now is actually a is Jake. Uh, because Jacob has to complete a six month probationary okay. review. Uh, the other person is we haven't done a review for me for uh, so if quite a while. Could you have something the supervisor's page done and ready for Jason to try it with Jacob? Yeah. Okay. That would be good. We're gonna do it for Brian too right off just help us yeah. things out know, in the near future. Uh, oh yes, Lois. Um, because Eric mentioned uh, his experience when he was working, one of the things that I think about with public service is getting some feedback, not annually, but maybe like every five years, from the constituents. Oh, we get that feedback. Um, ways have been set up, but I think it gives a, a broader picture of uh, the community. We can't call that peer review, okay? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, community review or something like that. Let's start the five years now. I want to get term. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's a great feedback notice. Thank you. I think it's terrible. Evaluating every time there's an election. So who, who are you thinking about? <laughs> You're thinking about like Brian and Jason. Yeah, Lisa. Oh, Lisa okay. Jason. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the kind of thing that could get feedback to the library. Mm -hmm. The dean has done. No. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a good point. All right. Um, moving on to our next topic. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, next up well, is actually before we move on. Action item from this topic is you'll work on updates and get back to us. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next up is the vacant public works operator position. Uh, this is in our current year budget and next year's budget uh, to hire a, a fifth employee for public works. Um, without a fifth employee, we have we have very little capacity to absorb unexpected absences or challenges. A fifth employee, we get by with the four employees, but we're not as resilient as we would be with, with a fifth employee. Maybe we can share it with that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had been in, I, I know you like that idea. Yeah, we had been at five employees for a while, uh, and it was working well. But due to staffing changes, we've, we've been down to four employees for uh, you know, for a little over a year. Are we budgeted for the fifth employee in the next fiscal year? Yes. Are we budgeted for pay increases in the next fiscal year? Yes. Is there anything about employee pay that is not budgeted for the next fiscal year if we were to add this person? And I'm talking about all of the pay. The expected annual increase for next year, our expected annual increase for this year, blew out what we had expected to pay for an annual increase. That could happen again next year. When we wrote this budget, we didn't know what all the circumstances were. So we budgeted an expected 3% increase. Um, How was the um, 
benefit plan structure based on I would have to double check on that. I believe that it was, I believe that it was a two person plan. Um, uh, that could well right here. But it might, it might be a family plan, but without the budget in front of me, I, I'm reluctant to. That's a big difference. And the budget was just a bit of under the back plan. Uh, we the part time employee uh, that we have been using is in in the budget. We did not anticipate and budget for um, you know we budgeted for a certain amount of money for the for a part time employee. We didn't. I'm saying when this was originally sold to the owners, um, select for at that time decided to replace six hundred hours per quarter. 2008, um, which is what a fit employee would be, but the part time employee was still working. That's going to be a big thing for me if we get to our fifth employee, the part time no longer needed. Said to replace 600 with 2000, that just never made sense. And the other part of that, folks, that by having five employees, they could do some shift work. It did, but that was that was pretty successful. In completely eliminating the part time employee uh, was much less successful. We didn't go over budget on the part time employee, and we had reduced the number of hours we were using it, but we never eliminated the part time employee. But it's not budgeted. I believe that there is some budget left for a part time employee. <laughs> Because we budget a total salary dollar amount. Yes. Um, and if there's no overtime used, there'd be plenty of money for a part time. What the unknown is when you go into the spring, a bad mud season, and it can just wipe out our whole budget, anyways. With overtime? With overtime and because they, they a lot of them have already maxed out their overtime just through the winter right and if you went to bad spring i can, i guess my question would be are are people counting on overtime as part of their income basically yeah basically that, that was the impression the hours that they shoot for that's what they shoot yeah. for yeah yeah okay we don't guarantee them any number any particular number of overtime hours but it snows every weekend. Yeah. So I just don't, I, uh, the fifth employee isn't going to take a lot of overtime away from the other four and they're not going to be cranky about this. Well, the hope was that it would reduce our overtime, but I don't think it ever really materialized that way. I, I still, think it did, but it, it never. I mean, they still bucked up against the wind, the, the ceiling. The 250. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the hopes were was that by having five employees, you could actually set up shifts so that one employee could once a month even could have the begin off and not be expected to receive the call. Plow snow. I mean, so in that regard, I think you know it was something that the employees supported. It you was know, and, and that was very successful, that employees were able to take time off during the winter so that we entered the summer with where the employees had less time in their, their comp time, which is one of the places where they use a lot of overtime hours. Um, they had less in their comp time and they had, uh, you know, better rested, had already taken some breaks over the winter. Uh, so we didn't have as many gaps during the summer. Like right now, when we're talking about scheduling, like for sand and some of these other things, a big part of wanting to do that right now is because it's good work for a limited crew to do. But that's also, I mean, we had discussed this in the past. It's an allotment a month, whether it's an employee at this much hourly, this much insurance, and all of it, whatever. You could contract out 
Sick in the winter, much less stress. Um, you know, before one guy gets sick, you're taking 25% of the job and putting it on three people essentially route wise. But if there's five and one gets sick, you're only taking 20% of the job. So there's advantages there. Um, but we could keep part time employees potentially to alleviate that strain and then use this long money for contracted services so that these guys can have a life in the summer. What are their thoughts? Do they just want a fifth employee and that's it? I think that gets into more detail than I've there's a lot really of run through with that. With that amount of money, there's a lot of freedom to make the job more enjoyable, the environment better. Um, and there's different routes that you could go. But if we go this route, the part time employees' hours need to be reduced because that was a promise to the taxpayers. That was never fulfilled. <clears throat> so, what route do they want? I guess would be my. I'd love to host the job. Um, there's great people out there, qualified candidates. For sure. Job market stuff, but there's still people that don't there. But if we're filling the jobs and, and they don't understand that, our time to help us. That might make them think differently. Again, with the ability for contract services, it really changed how you flow about the summer. So. And contracted services would, might save a little money too because we don't have benefits built into the cost. And we don't have a $30,000 transmission that we have to replace, even though our trucks are not. But um, there's a bad visual place. Beth, how many trucks do we have? I would expect that answer from you. How, how many plow trucks? Big plow trucks. Four. Four. Uh, Four. Three. Three tandems and a salt. 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 So the answer is, I did actually know the the answer answer is four. four tan three tandems and a salt truck. That's a bigger. So we have used for four people plowing in the way. Uh, we also have uh, the pickup truck. The foreman's truck. That's what they use for plowing. Oh, I'm never awake then. I guess, I guess where I'm sort of struggling with is we haven't even started our fiscal budget yet. This was a budget we put together back in December. Um, we got inflation that's uh, what, the highest since 1980. Uh, we got fuel prices that are, who knows what our fuel bill is going to be for the trucks. Um, we still got to go through negotiations with the union. I, I, I think it'd be wise to hold off a little while and not post this yet. I mean, I think four people can, they did, they ran the highway department for you know, forever until just a few years ago, we hired the fifth person. I think it'd be wise to hold off a little while. I actually think there's a lot of advantage in the employees. What I want to come down there to understand. Part time help. Done. Get a fifth employee, they should handle all the problems. There is freedom in contracted services. If that's the right, you know, the nice thing is that can, oh, well, I'm sick today. Oh, well, we're going to all say it. Okay. All stand for a day. Sure. There's freedom there. And I like to hate that. Um, I am fine with that. Well, the other piece of all of that is all the projects don't have to get done. And what is the priority of those things. One of the, one of the reasons that fifth employee was considered essential was that 
Tim, who was spending a lot of time spring putting out standard uh, yeah. we, We've got a discussion coming up later on. We about, don't do about the development. Uh, yeah, so if, if that is not being done or it's being done considerably less than it was you know, 10 years ago. Does that change the dynamic? And that was one of the reasons we always urge from the highway departments, you know, we need more help. You know, spend three months putting sand and gravel, then we don't have time to do any actual work in the summer. I think they stay pretty busy. There's a lot more projects that go on now than used to. I like the fifth employee because we have an employee that's going to affect it next year. Now we're going to go from four to three, and we're going to look at the same mess we looked at last year. But I want them to get some feedback. I, I completely agree with that. I don't think it was so to the public. It's being able to eliminate the need for part time help. And it was, you know, it, was, it was put out there as a way to offset that 2,080 hours or 240 hours versus 600 hours. So, I mean, it's about five minutes and I'm going to for a couple So, maybe we should invite Jason to this conversation rather than having Brian be a conduit. No, I, I can. And actually, any of the crew, the whole crew should be invited to this select board meeting where we talk about it and they should feel free to speak up. Really? Um, why not? I don't want to manage the so good. Okay, well, Jason at the very least should be here. So, how about I go out with Jason to the meet with the crew and talk the the options through with them, and then Jason and I will report back to the board. Yeah, they just need to understand that ultimately it will be the board. <clears throat> that either supports going the position out or not, but we want to get feedback yeah. the way the options. Okay. So if the owners are not in the place, no, we're not posting anything. I do think I like the story of where the success versus services. Yeah. Okay, um, next up is the floor cemetery. Pretty much an action, at least one action for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Except, okay, I don't know. I wasn't getting all right, uh, so the next piece up I have is fencing for Grove Cemetery. So um, this was getting somebody out there to give us an estimate was quite an ordeal. Um, uh, we just really couldn't get anybody to give us a call back. <laughs> so uh, this is this would be large enough to be considered a major purchase, uh, which should go out to uh, out to bid. Our problem with it is. Couldn't get anybody to show up to even help us out with an estimate. You're following our sole source, though. That's my my supposition. I guess is that this should qualify as a sole source. There are other fencing contractors out there, but none of them returned our calls. This is a split rail vinyl. Well, uh, it is. It says vinyl at the top. But that's not the. Jeez. Yeah. 
Living in vinyl is hard. <laughs> There's two. Uh, there's actually two estimates. There are. One for split rail and one for time. I see, but the split rail is high off. It does. It does. I know it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, they, they both say at the top oh. vinyl. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah. All folks require rock building hydraulic concrete. Please add $100 per post. So everything that require that would require rock drilling, if it had to go into stone or bedrock, would cost an extra hundred dollars. What do we budget for cemetery? Five thousand. Six. Six. Six thousand all of us. Yeah. So that means we don't do any more of the stones if we do that budget. Two and a half years. Three years. Well, yeah, my first thing I thought when I looked at this is could we do half or even <laughs> or one split? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> is when the wireless issue is just this 142 foot section, technically, right? That's where the from. Yes. I, I believe that's. I don't think that we got a. I don't think they named names when they complained that our fence that we needed a fence. But I believe that was the section they were talking about. Yeah. yeah I'd have to review the letter, but uh, that is the problem side. So just just so everybody knows, if you get one of the split rail, if you fetch the entire bank, uh, it's almost sixteen thousand dollars. And if you went with a line, it's twenty six thousand for fencing the entire. We fenced two cemeteries with vinyl. Some number of years ago, but first I don't remember prices anywhere near this. But like pull some rocks out of the ground, stack them up, make it look. I don't know if putting rocks out would meet the state definition required for fencing or for care really? of the cemetery. Because you have to leave, you have to leave it open. Anyways, for access. Yep. So the state statute is really not something to consider. That's not a problem that we have. Save on money. We also on some of our other cemeteries have not we've done like Evergreen is vinyl fencing on the roadside and it's not a chain link. What do you call the fence that's on the back of that? Yeah, Just a wire fence. It's a wire fence, but that fence is, that fence is probably years old. Yeah. And that's been on since I was a baby. But yeah, we could look at, you know, a cosmetic fence and then Finishing off with something cheaper. Hmm. I would have thought that the split rail fence would be about as cheap as you could go. Right. But <clears throat> did they offer any other ideas or solutions for it? They did not, but we can request something. Okay. We don't have money in the budget for it anyway. Well, I'm going to have a hard time thinking about spending $15,000. Almost $16,000 on that summer period. Yeah, if y'all are. You know, we're always seeing ads on Front Porch Forum for strong young persons who are looking for work. You suppose any of those people would be free provided the materials uh, <clears throat> in the shovel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've read about the is it called a yeah, you could. They don't tend to work very good. And then we, I mean, 
if they're not insured, we'd have to hire them and have them conduct under our insurance. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, usually we would have them sign very early. You know, some charges anyway. Could we chip away at this project? I mean, there's footage price in $3 a foot. We can do the southerly portion and the roadside portion for not too much above budget price, and then we could tap off here. Are we going to be willing to do something that's slower price? You know, will they maintain that same price per foot if it's only half the? <laughs> it's worth asking. Um, but yeah, I think either that or doing two different materials for the fence is probably our best bet. Like do a, a white vinyl, like evergreen ledge is white vinyl on the roadside and then wire fence on the other side. We could. How about split rail on the roadside? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're it's out in a dirt, on a dirt road. So yeah, we could do. I would say, like, that's what Evergreen is. We could do that again. We could just put in a new split rail fence on the roadside and then do, you know, chain link or something cheap on the backside where it's much less visible and we're mostly just concerned about defining borders. I mean, I have to fix up the plate. <laughs> And this is yeah. If we have if we have an employee and time for them to work, we could assign it. Does it make the cash? Is that what you're thinking, Mark? Oh, I was just wondering what. Um, I I guess I haven't noticed people complaining. Maybe they complain directly to you. Previous board. The previous board received a letter. Um, this line here. That line there was getting stuck. Oh, sorry, sure. Somebody was plowing their driveway and they were hitting stones as well as reported with a plow. This is the property. I know the property. Um, I know. Kind of mm -hmm. yeah. the something out there. Do you want to go back to the Were you saying uh, this line or this line? Yeah, it's fine. So are there some like dead people's relatives complaining here? We haven't heard anything from the people that are there. <laughs> It's somewhere around nine o'clock. This oh, meeting just goes. I know. Right. We're losing. Yeah, so, we're losing focus. Thank you, Mark. I don't think how about I go there. back? How about I come back to you with options for mixed materials? So again, using kind of the, the uh, a cheaper resource for three sides, split rail for the front, and I'll ask about doing just two sides this year and coming back to do the other two sides. Well, the front and the front. The front and the yeah. We can put up a 10,000 volt mic. Yeah. Or put up an electric fence in with a piece of livestock. Right. <laughs> okay. We're going to virtual. All the right. Sorry, Donna. Sorry, Donna. Sounds like an ATV. Yeah. 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 We are definitely going to the wrong direction. Three executive Eldred's, Yeah, Eldred's property and then three executive sessions. That's the next step. Let's get through this quickly. All right. All right. So uh, with the Eldred's, uh, they had a complaint in, another complaint in about the Dixon property uh, that their neighbors. Um, mm. Uh, Tracy uh, has been up there this weekend. Um, I've reached out to her and I haven't heard back yet to get a report from what she's seen. Um, 
provided an update at that time. Uh, I'll also mention that uh, we have had some issues with uh, locating Ronnie Dixon, um, the property owner. That he is not on, not on the property anymore. But he still owns. Yes. Is he on the taxes? Yeah. We have both taxes for one of the names. Yeah, I think it's uh, Armstrong. The sheriff's department will be in if there's a restraining order on him, he must have to check in somewhere or something. Hmm. If need be, I would suggest having the sheriff's department serve him. If he needs to be served with a health order or a you know ordinance violation or whatever, yes. What's the health officer? What's their goal for going out there? Right now, their goal for going out there is to check on the health and well being of Perry and Armstrong. Uh, it's kind of their, their first goal. Uh, is she out there? Last I knew, she was out there. Uh, the letter that the Elbridge had made it sound like maybe she's not anymore, and that's what I, I really need to hear from uh, Tracy about this. Um, if Harriet is not there, or if the conditions are bad enough, we have to consider an emergency health order. Uh, the solid waste violations and everything else right now are Important and related, but uh, I'm most concerned about Harriet's health and well-being. So, is she there renting from? She's not renting. Um, there is. There, are, as I understand it, their agreement was that Harriet and. Can I just ask a question before we continue? Yeah. Is this all open session appropriate? I don't really know. I believe it would be. I don't think it's protected. It's not. I think it's kind of awfully personal for the Armstrong family, but I'm not aware of this being protected information. I wasn't imagining that we're going into detail and then just kind of like hitting the Yeah. I appreciate that, Don. Um, recorded, so. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But. And I, you know, Dean, you're like, familiar with a lot of the role of the health officer also. So if you have an opinion about what's disclosing too much, I would welcome it. But uh, yeah, I mean, being in the general context and trying not to, you know, it's the, I, with me and Brian talked about. Uh, and we've been in discussion about this about this situation and um, uh, speaking as much in general terms and focus on the health officer role, which is which is you know health of the community and the public and you know and safety. And you know that's going to lead to. A health risk or safety risk for neighbors or you know, places nearby, but also rolled into that, unfortunately, is the humanity based of being concerned about the person and uh, you know, whether that's a safe place, whether EMS can get in there, where whether police or fire department can, can make, you know egress and access, you know, uh, those things that, whether her water is working, whether she's, you know, she's, uh, heat isn't a big deal right now, but, um, you know, excessive combustibles. I had a unit up in St. John's Knowles and I had to contact the state fire marshal when he came within 72 hours to pull out all excessive combustibles and they pulled out 
you know, 250 contractor bags full of stuff from this apartment. It's cool. a, you know, a share of the building. So, it, you know, it, in that case, it was a factor affecting a whole building, but this is a separate unit, but it's still affecting, you know, the person then you know, potentially the public. Yeah. So, um, I'm just looking at the statute and it says that uh, I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit, but to be the bottom public body may not hold executive session for the following. And it talks about, um, sorry, I lost the place. Clear and imminent peril to the public safety. So I don't think this particularly applies. Um, although I guess it depends. I could see that applying to the um, um, individual, individual though. Um, secure your emergency response measures, which uh, of which disclosure could jeopardize public safety. So, which is just nine names, so I think, maybe. That way, that is the public. The use of the word public. Yeah, but your question, Eric, about is she renting? I believe, as I understand it, that there was a, a prior agreement that allowed her to stay there, but she's not renting. And the restraining order is against the owner of the oh, property. Yes. As I understand it. If, if she were renting, then it would give the health officer an opportunity to do an investigation. If she requested it, uh, and any violation of the landlord or something like that, yeah, it all gets complicated. But I'm, I'm more concerned about all the crap outside. It's an attractive business. I mean, it's, it's a place that is Absolutely attractive to rats and rodents. I mean, to me, there's not much doubt the uh, health order could be written given the amount of garbage and If I were the comments, I'd be saying we do everything if there's issues with regard to the town, and whatever we have to do, I mean, I, I'm concerned about you know, this is our show too, but as much or more concerned about Franklin, she's not open. They've been, they've been dealing with that for. A long, long time. And it's, I drove by there on my bike the other day. It's, it's disgusting. It's bad. I wouldn't want to live next to it. Probably do something. But what? I mean, we've been dealing with this for a, a decade. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say we've been dealing with this for a decade. We've had numerous uh, health orders issued. We've Got the state involved, and the state gave up. I mean, they pretty much thrown up their hands. They're, they're not doing anything. The complexity right now is like emergency health orders and everything. You know, totally can write up, but it's it's the, like what Brian has said: is, issuing up on a curve means that that's not. That's not where it should go. It should go to the person who's the customer, right? Yeah. So you have to not only know where that person is, and you have to issue them that, but it it's also that whole next level where you know issuing something, to finally figuring out who to issue it to, and then those next steps afterwards. That's that person that you know that has to comply. But if they don't have the means for complying, you're still in the same boat that you were, except you just gave them this paper saying you need to comply. And so it, it that's where it kind of feels like 
it gets kind of stuck in this process. Is uh, I don't disagree. And I was a health officer, a deputy health officer. So I know. Yeah. I have <laughs> space of having to deal with in that situation in particular. But there's, there are a couple of things. If you issue an order, it can be recorded with the land records. So that if this guy is found, that if he tries to sell a property, yeah. or, you know, then it's it's recorded in the land records and according to the model law, in order to get a clear title, that has to be taken care of. That, that violation has to be cured, and it has to be a notice filed in the land records that the violation has been cured. Otherwise, he's dead in the water. He can't do a thing. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't do anything. So at a minimum, we shouldn't do that much. Um, and if we have to go to court, uh, you know, to enforce a health order, I think we've got an obligation to do it. And if the court says yes and nothing happens, um, then I think we need to seriously look at whether we spend town funds and go there and, you know, work with the oil and solid waste district and clean the damn place up and, and, and evict them. Get them out of here. Um, yeah, and we're going to, the, okay, we're going to call it, it's 10 o'clock, we need to keep moving, um, but I think that's noted, sounds like there's some traction, we'll keep pushing so it continues. Yep. Um, let's move on to our next, thanks for your input, Dean. Yeah, sure. Um, let's move on to the executive session um, to discuss. Yeah. 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 Oh, the tenant. Yeah. And then there's just three executive sessions. So that should be a quick discussion. Hey, go, quick, go. Did they ever, did, I mean, they reached out to you. Did they ever reach out to you, Brian? Yes. And do they need an extension on their rent? Uh, when they reached out to me, I said that the select board had declined to give them an extension. We raised that during the meeting, and it was yes. not taken up. So that's been my communication to them. Okay. So at this point, in theory, they're supposed to be gone. Uh, I'd have to first? check the calendar, but it's when did we meet with them? When did I meet with them? They had 30 days. July 1st is close enough. It's looking for Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have, I've, I've received reference checks for them. They're looking. So. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next up, executive session for employee and compensation. Do you have a motion? Uh, I'm also in an executive session for special employee mm -hmm. evaluation and compensation. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the reason mm -hmm. that we have a space yeah. for that. Well, I think you still need to go as allowable. Uh, but. Um, Donna, I'll take out of the second session and back on notes. That's it. Normal. Wait. Wait a second. Second. Oh, second. <laughs> Third. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I think so. I'll try it. Aye.